Okay. All right. So it's live on your page on Interverse. Sick. I'm so excited. It's going to be tight. It'll be the best one yet, Chance. I can feel it. Feel it in my, feel it in my, in my plums. Woo! First live time. This is so exciting. I feel like this live technology is so fucking dope and we don't use it enough. Oh, uh, well, I, uh, yeah, boy, I'm gonna make a watch party on my uh, personal page, or I think it should be my personal page, probably. If they can hear us, then we'll kind of start and share it as we can while we go. Anybody out there able to type if they can hear us? Oh, yeah, there's like a 20 second lag delay. Yeah. All right, they should let us know any second. All right, I think Phil's saying he can hear. Yay. All right, well, I'm ready to go. I got my mug of ceremonial cacao. Setting my intentions Ooh. that we will blast a lot of love and light and wisdom out of this conversation, which I think is kind of inevitable since I'm talking to Jamie Seed. So I'll just start the way I always start, which is welcome to the one within all, back to the I inner know. verse. If you don't know Jamie, then you should. There's a whole bunch of podcasts that he's done with me in the past. He's an incredible photographer, famous in the music festival world all around the country, probably all around generally nice guy friendly guy and a man after my own heart because he's a serious hype man i've never seen anybody that can promote their friends so well and so lovingly and all around awesome dude to have in a chat and we're going to wrap up 2019 talk about some things that have been on jamie's mind and we're also going to open things up to pay, maybe have some call-ins if we can make that work so Yes. Buckle up, strap in, burn your sage, oh, that's meditate into the middle of your mind, heart space, do whatever you got to do, and let's let's do this thing. Jamie, how are you? Um, dude, I am rolling. <laughs> I'm rolling, and I'm not I'm not rolling like you might think. I'm rolling on uh, on sobriety and uh, and feeling fantastic, man. I uh, I'm just feeling really good in a, in a natural kind of way. And um, I'm just so grateful that you're letting me come on here right now before the full moon, as you so wisely uh, intuited the other day, we we're talking about this flowing on this energy, man. I just got this uh, recent burst of inspiration and, um, and motivation. And I just, I'm just excited to talk about it, man. Uh, t first of all, thank you for blowing me up so big with all those kind of words, man. I, uh, I feel like uh, if I could be a hype man for these incredible people that I've been blessed to call my friends and that's uh that's the very least I can do because we you, me and you both are so blessed to be a part of this incredibly talented and beautiful community of creators and wise spirits and elders that are younger than the older people around us somehow and I think that we're like part of this crazy archaic revival that's happening you know on the planet we're taking part in this uh, I want us to take a pause for gratitude for this format a podcast that you've been a leader in in our community like you're the only really person I know in our community that's actively doing it right now and thank you because I was just sitting there thinking as we were preparing for this like this is the third one we've done or the fourth one it's we've been doing this for a while and uh and like it's still a new thing you know so like props for getting on this train so early and being such a thought leader in this new format that um that is like bigger than the Gutenberg press revolution. You know, this revolution of the mind we got going on where we can share deep intellectual conversations and ideas in a way that's literally never happened before in human history. So 
<laughs> anyway, hi. <laughs> oh, thanks. You know, I don't, it doesn't feel like being a huge thought leader to do a podcast because there's, I heard a statistic that in 2019, there are over 750,000 active podcasts, but I think that's actually a really beautiful thing. But no other interverse. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. It's a beautiful thing. There's only one interverse, but dude, no, it is. It's a beautiful thing. And like the more the merrier, man, the more we can get people fucking listening to each other. Instead of corporate media talking points, I think the better we're all, we are all will be. And the more we can choke out the monster that is the corporate uh, state of, uh, you know, the demon state, or the, the, the fucking matrix that we've all been jacked into. It's been controlling our minds for millennia now. Right. And know. what is that other than like a rejection of our true nature and of nature itself? I mean, there's not really any other kind of matrix. I like... I like to reflect on as I've been in this journey, one of the very first episodes I ever did was like, what is the matrix <laughs> way back in? Yeah. I think that had to oh, be really? like December, 2016 or very early 2017 back when I was first getting started. And it, I haven't gone back and listened to it for a long time, but I might even expect to cringe a little bit at how far my perspective has come on it. Cause there is a lot floating around in our community in the new age connected sphere which kind of overlaps and touches a lot it's even even festival folk quite quite deeply touches it there is a thread of this gnosticism which is a really ancient idea or in some cases even a cult or multi, many cults that have represented these ideas which is that reality is a prison the earth is a cage your body is shackling your soul and that is super dangerous. The further I go, the more I realize how super dangerous that is. It's putting up a veil of separation between you, yourself, you, the natural world, you and everybody else, like wanting to call everything an illusion. Well, it may be true on a deep psycho-spiritual level that <clears throat> we're, all, we're all playing paper dolls and we're really the same being and all of our friends are finger puppets of our, that we ourselves at a deep level are creating. And that's cool. But like, uh, so best <laughs> exactly, <to> exactly. <laughs> uh, the, the overarching point though, would be that we're, we are not in an illusion, uh, when it comes to nature, when it comes to our emotions, when it comes to the people and things that we're passionate about and care about, that's actually the truth because it wouldn't matter what type of, yeah reality setting you're in those yeah. things would would have to exist they're components of what it means to be <laughs> this energy of source i agree yeah i really like uh i like that idea of the you know the, <clears throat> the, the universal oneness of all things not set like the illusion of separateness is what allows uh a lot of evil to perpetrate i feel like you know that we're, that we are separated and trapped in this in these you know, which we are, we're temporarily split, I feel like, into these containers, but we're all interconnected on these deep energetic levels that we deny. Um, you know, I feel like I've spent most of my life being taught to deny or denying things that I just intuitively knew were true, you know, and like, I don't know, I think that's the, that's kind of the part of the cult of, you know, the cult of the mind that we've got going on, um, you know, that the, the, the somebody else took control of the garden of our minds, you know, and took us away from a bunch of archaic intuitive knowledge and took us into the scientific world, which has allowed for a ton of beautiful exploration and wonderful things that have happened. I'm not anti-science by any means, but it's like to the exclusion of the, of the uh, spirit and the uh, intuition. It's at a certain point, me and a, me and a friend were talking a minute ago about that. Um, you know, when you just know something when you feel something, the intuition knows it it really doesn't matter what the measurement tools say you know what i mean like uh that you can't like uh some things can't be measured you know and uh and and i feel like that's we're we're in this kind of dark age that, that hopefully we come out of a spiritual connection where we've become convinced that we're not all already one you know and uh and that probably sounds like some total hippie bullshit but like I'm not high into <laughs> right now, unfortunately, and I still think it's true. Uh, but yeah, it's um, man, I don't know, dude. I've been I've been on this thing lately, though, man, because you're talking about gnosticism. I feel like um, you know that is like the 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 idea of, of gnosis or knowing things. You know, um, once you know stuff, you close. 
You know what I mean? Like once, once you think you know something, then you're closed and that's a state of vulnerability and a state of weakness. I feel like, not knowing is better yeah, which is also <laughs> ironically I mean? not knowing is a vulnerable state too. I want to also throw out there, keep your maybe keep your yeah. face a little closer to the mic. It gets a kind of quiet. Um, you don't have to like okay. eat it or whatever, but if it's slightly yeah. <laughs> slightly closer, it might be easier. But was, Joe, Joe, Joe Rogan Joe Rogan recommends a one fist away. So I'm <laughs> one fist away. Uh, yeah, man, I love that he measures things in fists. God bless you, Joe Rogan. Yeah, I mean, um, one of the things that. <laughs> I hope to see re- revived as far as the concept of an archaic revival is healthy masculinity. And I mean, I think that's oh, getting yeah. really sacrificed on the Definitely altar of social cowardly. progress right now as a, a scapegoat. And we. Yeah, man. And I mean, there is such a thing as toxic masculinity, you know, and, uh, and, and unfortunately that's kind of taken over the word of masculinity. I'm so glad you brought that up though, because, you know, we've been, I think I know that in my personal life, I have been just guided and saved by the divine feminine, you know, coming in and like speaking through multiple females to me and kind of like speaking through love, you know, their intuitive sense is so strong and they're able to feel these different realms that males don't allow themselves to feel because we're the we're the warriors and the and the physical side of of the of the uh, the duality of existence, you know. And um and it's like, yeah, man, I feel like the masculine is really look what we've got, you know, running the show is a you know it's, there, there's a there's a, a a false artificial masculine. It's like this t- tough the tough guy ideals, you know, that are empty and uh you know real toughness, man, is like. You know, I was talking about this with a warrior friend of mine in Mississippi who's a Black Panther. He's restarting the Black Panther Party. Shout out to Doe Belly Stray, the drunken disciple. If you ever get a chance to check his, uh, he's starting this uh, video series up and trying to get his people, the, the poverty stricken Black community in Mississippi that's been broken by the societal structures of that dark place. And anyway, we're talking about how like that, you know, part of, part of masculinity, it, it really is violence at a certain level, you know, and, uh, and, and that, uh, in that in that vein it's like uh sometimes violence it's it's like it, you know it it's something i've been experiencing lately is like not being physically but violent but just standing in the space of like like jordan peterson talks about the, the no you know the hard no and then the no behind it it's like when we talk about taxes and taxes are enforced at gunpoint that whole idea but when you say no to somebody and you're a man you're and you say no hard you're really saying no or else you know what i mean like no or <laughs> we're gonna fucking fight you know and like it's people don't people don't like it man like i've been saying no here lately and one of my best friends uh joe walker is one of those wisest dudes i know has come a really long way in his his uh his world mentality lately uh and and it's been it just no dude saying no and and that's like i think that's part of um, that masculine strength of just like protecting your bubble protecting your family protecting your community is just rebuking and rejecting things with the promise of violence, you know, if it doesn't, if it doesn't, which work is out. what the state is, and, uh, actually. and you know, that violence, the state is the monopoly. Yeah, on yeah, for force, sure. It's the, the that's monopoly on violence. Even on democracy course, is exactly. like a small group exactly. of people telling, uh, or a group of people telling the rest of the people that because we have the numbers, you got to do what we say or else. I mean, that in itself is a pretty broken sure. system. Well, the best idea of a, rep, a representative, you know, like a, a, a democratic republic is all of us, you know, and, and that's what I feel like we, you know, that's one thing I really want to talk about today is like the tribe of all of us. Like we, one, I think one of the big sicknesses that we're facing as a, as a society right now is that we've effectively had our community stolen from us and broken by our technology, by our, uh, by our uh, falling away from our institutional structures because we've lost faith in them because they've been perverted and corrupted to the point that we know that they're no good. And, um, and, and, and with these devices, we've all, you know, uh, these vices of these devices, I should say, we've, uh, we've become so separated and yet we, we feel like we're still connected. And like, you know, meanwhile, like, you know, this, this technology that we have right here, we're able to touch and create a community and potentially touch millions of people. We, our voices could some somehow right now be heard by billions of people. Theoretically, I mean, Theoretically, you don't even know the you know, future so either. That, I mean, there's so much content. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This could. This, yeah, man. I mean, who knows what resonates with anything? You know, nobody knows. I mean, but it, you know, at the same time, like our community, I feel like we're getting this false sense of community, especially a lot of us that might not have this vibrant type of music community that we do have, where we can be together in physical reality and 
dance with each other and sweat on each other and hug each other and grow sweat hugs and stuff, you know, and sweat lodges and peyote churches and ayahuasca churches and all these ways that we can that we can come together and connect. Um, but a lot of people in America don't have that anymore. Their best their best uh, substitute for that is their their Instagram feed and their Facebook feed and their job where they hate it and they come home to to be alone in a room full of people. Yeah, those things become a time suck. And, where um, if you weren't you know scrolling through the news feed, you might be bored enough to like take steps to make your life change. <laughs> I'm guilty of this myself. I, I yeah, can... exactly. I'm stupid, yeah, stupid but I wanted to say in your watch party, there's a shitload of comments already. And I had to say hey to everybody that nice. already reached out. It's kind of hard for me to keep hey. track of because I've got the hey, live stream everybody. window. There's comments in that. There's my watch party. And there's Jamie's yeah, I'm watch not even party. Looking. I'm not even looking. But Barnold. <laughs> You've got all kinds of parties going on. The, it's a party up here, uh, Master baby. nerd, Brandon Arnold, had to shout out about my hat. He said it was cracking him up. It's going to make you even more cracked up to know that this is like a legitimate high tech tinfoil hat right here. <laughs> oh, like, oh, uh, yes. I got this from yes. my, my homie, Matt Landman, who is a 5g activist. He has an incredible Kim trail documentary called, um, Franken skies. He's been on the show and this is silver threaded. I, I'm going to show it again, silver threaded. So it's like it a super hurt. tinfoil hat. It can't hurt. Protect my dome from all those microwaves. Does it hurt you? Does it does it hurt you to wear it? <laughs> Not since I got a haircut. Now does it, it actually hurt you fits. To wear it? I couldn't wear it when he when he first there sent it go. to me. Yeah, well, the haircut. But yeah, thank you, good. Matt Landman, for sending me this dope hat. <laughs> it's a really cool gift. Sparrow Protection yeah, Clothing yeah. Company. I gotta say that that's a cool development of 2019 since we're getting well, <laughs> we're getting pretty far in. <laughs> Reaper Crew, Wook Patrol. Yeah, I just want to represent the Wook Patrol Reaper Crew. I'm coming here on behalf of the uh, brave soldiers of the Wook Patrol. Um, there's a lot of wooks out there we got to deal with. From and, takes a lot of energy to show them in, kindness in and love. Public offices, in America. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We got to love them. We got to love them through it. You know what I mean? And it's it's uh, it's not about condemnation. It's about identification and education, really. You know what I mean? Because we've all been wooks before. Hey, Bodie, Chewy, Luna, come here. <laughs> they're they're, 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 they're wooking out too. They are they are on the lookout right now. I mean. Um, man, yeah, dude, it's, uh, it's really, I don't know. I, I feel super inspired right now. I feel like we're at this turning point in, in the galaxy, really, you know, there's like this, there's this sudden shift going on that I just like recently, been it just something they were I've been dealing with some like major depressive episode here in the past couple of weeks, like worse than, worse than ever really. And, um, I made this post about it the other day that it was a really makeshift like first draft kind of ramble of the thoughts that i had had but one of the things that really got me is just like the the depression is anger turned inward and uh that's not a new idea at all that's just it goes back to freud you know but the, uh the, it really just hit me i was like what you know what's what's there to be mad at and how can i redirect this anger from turning inward and isolating and attacking my my own self and my own being into externalizing it with love and and violence you know what i mean like spiritual warfare violence and going outward with it what can i what can i attack with love outside of myself instead of attacking myself within with hate that would actually make this world a better place and uh i see a lot of opportunity you know there's a lot of things that we can do in the in the uh, in the near and the far that would really you know but anyway going back i, I want to touch base on that again but like the uh, the community thing man like i just it really hit me that we we're lucky that we have this little community where we get this bubble, you know, like we, we always kind of talk about festivals being almost like a church or something, you know, and I think that's, that's really true. You know, it's like the, uh, uh, this, this, this container, this space, this gathering point that we can kind of celebrate lives and deaths in this past year, since the last time we met, uh, one of our mutual friends, uh, uh, passed away under tragic circumstances and a place, the, a, a, the farm, you know, a gathering place that we collectively come to celebrate. It was the same place that he came to uh, to get married. We came to celebrate his funeral, you know, and uh, that was that was our friend Marcus Phillips, you know, and it just kind of got me thinking. That was a really heavy, heavy load and a heavy burden to a lot of us, a lot of friends, you know, out there. It's like, you know, that. Um, but it, it got me thinking, and you know, and I hope I don't, I don't, I don't want to in any way sound, you know, uh, flippant about this or lightweight about this, but it really got me thinking about 
these spaces are more than just celebratory spaces and our community is more than just a party. You know what I mean? This is a real family and a real community and we're blessed to have it. And we have some of the most incredible, talented, kind-hearted, gifted creators in the world that are a part of it. And I think that we really are put in this position for a reason, you know, that we have, we need to show and share this community idea and we don't have, you know, I mean, like the work control is the closest thing that we have to a real police force in that, uh, in that uh, uh, community in a lot of ways, you know, but like, and I'm not naive enough to think that the, that the festival world is the real world, but it also very much is the real world. And I think that a lot of what we do there is very important. A lot of the laughs and tears and celebrations and, um, and, and, um, you know, just the togetherness, you know, uh, the different walks of life and the people that can come and have these transformative psychedelic experiences. They are providing a safe container for these artists to come and explore new uh, medias. And like, I know, we, you know, we've touched on this before and we don't have to, you know, uh, repeat ourselves or beat a dead horse, but like, you know, I feel like that community is an archaic revival of an ancient tribal thing and that we have to grab a hold of it and channel that energy and use it for greater good somehow and figure out how to expand it and honor it and respect it um and stop believing that it's just a weekend temporary thing that we got to go back to our bullshit world that that's not part yeah. of yeah you know and yeah that, i mean the, the idea that, that we, we need to come together it. at specific ordained places just to be creative and have a good time and fall into a collective space of love and respect and gratitude that is a symptom of disassociation in our regular society the fact that we exactly. don't just achieve that on yeah. a regular basis with friends and family and i want to also touch on marcus phillips who passed away earlier this year like you said just because i have kind of a personal story i haven't really told anybody before but it's a lesson that i think is super useful and important marcus had come over a long time back to record a little mini recap talking about a festival he threw and we had a good time hanging out chatting it was my only time I ever got to even hang out with them one-on-one -on -one, and I recorded it and I was gonna publish it and for whatever reason I forgot actually I can guess why I forgot that I had that recording because I recorded it on a physical device and I usually do them online like this and just already had some projects going and it all of a sudden it had been like two or three months and I hadn't worked on it or published it. <laughs> and my reaction to this was to, instead of like either just getting it out and putting it next on my project list or just letting Marcus know what happened and why it didn't come out was just to like avoid co talking to Marcus when I saw him places. Cause oh, yeah. I was like, Oh shit, he's going to be like annoyed that I, that I oh, yeah. uh, skipped him like that. <laughs> and it's not worth it, man. Whatever it is that you think is, um, whatever it is that's stressing you out and keeping you disconnected from other people, most of those people are willing to let almost anything slide. <laughs> and it, it would just really oh, have made man. the energy flow restored between me and him if I had just been like, said something about it or uh, not been sort of shy about that. So it's a little miniature lesson. You never know if right someone's not even going to be around for you to connect with again later. It's a good lesson. That's it, man. That's it. And that, that temporal nature of reality, I have a similar, you know, like me and Marcus, uh, had, um, had been closer at one point than, than, and working together more than we were, you know, um, at the end of his life. And that's something that I'll regret forever is I had a, I had a similar, um, just disconnect and, you know, kind of a, a, a shame It's something that I'll, I, I had to instill kind of process and the shame. And it's something that I do, a lot of times with people is like, you know, just separate and, and, and block out. And it, it's a, I think it's related to the depression, which is something that, you know, a lot of us separate through. it's not an excuse, you know? Um, but like, man, what you just said is so valid about that, that avoidance and that fear of, um, of reconnecting because of uh, something, there's some energetic block between you. Like you, I let you down. You, know, you owe you me 10 down, bucks so or something wanna, stupid. You know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, dude, Especially that's a really books. good one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Man, yeah, right. That can that can end a that can end a <laughs> marriage right there. You know, end a, end a look uh, union. 
um, you know, uh, you borrowed that for me twice. Uh, but yeah, man, the, um, that, that, I love that idea. Cause like I've been processing all this heavy stuff. I went home to Mississippi and kind of like, uh, have this family relationships down there that in a lot of ways are very strained. And I've always felt like disconnected from them and judged and separate from them. Like I, I was always different from them and just have never really felt like fully in, in part of, of that. And, uh, and I was kind of realizing I was down there this time. It's like, I, when I start, when I think like that, I act like that. And when I act like that, I live into that role and then it doubles down on the whole, uh, perception and then, you make it true you know and that goes into other relations you, you make it true by the actions that you take and it's like the imagination it's like playing a role you start thinking well they think i'm this way so i'm gonna act this way it's like uh, my stepdad has this great this great uh idea that people live up to whatever expectations you put on them finger you know? puppets I'm not man big on putting, like we said uh, <laughs> we're all, yeah <laughs> we're all finger yeah, puppets dude, of each yeah. Other. yeah yeah man it, yeah, dude, for sure. And it's like we all create these straw straw man images in our mind of our uh, of the other and the uh, and and the and the reason to stay separate and the reason to stay down. We beat ourselves down more than anybody else ever would. Like I guarantee that, you know, I you know I can't speak for Marcus, but I feel like it would, you know, that you're that you're probably right that it would have been a pretty much a big old belly laugh kind of situation with him specifically if you would have got with him, you know, and just uh you know, it's just beautiful though, because you get to share that lesson, you know, with, uh, with everybody, man. And like the, the, I don't know, dude, like there's, there's so much heavy stuff that I could talk about with that kind of thing, because it relates to the, to the, um, you know, the, a lot of depression and, and, and self-worth kind of stuff that in my life and in the life. Well, it comes from a lot of complexes. First, we have our, our built in save the world complex because we were raised on superheroes. And then, we, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, or at yeah. least built in like yeah, need for totally. recognition and fame complex, which com- stems from a lot of stuff from the fact that we all have some mild abandonment trauma, mild to severe abandonment trauma, I should say, just from the workforce reality yeah, yeah. of our parents in most familial situations. And so that leads to a lot of high pressure, high mental pressure about like, what I haven't done yet. And I'm already this age and I'm not this, I haven't accomplished X, Y, and Z. So I'm a piece of shit or I, I don't look as attractive to myself yeah. in the mirror yeah. as I did a year ago, or I don't feel motivated to keep going on something that I feel like I should. Well, all that stuff is okay. It just like really become simple, follow what gets you excited, do and make that the goal. And it, it yeah. won't, it won't matter too yeah. much. Uh, and also your health and burn off everything that does and, and no. realizing our yeah. physical health has yeah. a big role to play in our mental health too it the more i think that's why music festivals help people really get out of their own box because just moving in weird ways actually moving your body in different ways than normal helps you think in different ways than normal it might not happen right in that moment but it often actually it does yeah. so the whole dance component of things is what I'm getting at. It can really unlock doors in your mind oh, yeah. as much as psychedelics. Oh yeah, man. Do you think I'm... we should maybe recap 2019 yeah, a little oh, bit? Yeah. We're, <laughs> we're good ways in. Yeah. I have no idea what time it is. Yeah. That's a, uh, that, that's a, um, that's fun with me for sure, man. 2019. Let me drop gosh, a yeah, little like, thing that I had on my mind smart, from man. a thread earlier, which was back to this hat something in 2019 that I think is really relevant for people to be aware of is that the rollout of 5G technology has begun. A lot of controversy about that and a lot of pretty damning evidence about it not really being safe at all. Or, And that is uh, worth knowing about, hence why I have a cool hat like this, thanks to my friend Matt Landman that I mentioned earlier. But there's another key component of the 5g rollout that i think is important because it's exemplary of what the state does to especially the fascist type of state where corporations and the government work together to achieve mutually beneficial ends which is what we're in we're in a yeah i mean that's the definition of fascism is when there's a revolving door between corporations and state that's a it's a real thing and with 5g they use just like they use in a lot of things, a classic dialectical scenario where first they reveal that 5G has risks or dangers. Then 
they reveal that you have Chinese companies trying to, and they've already demonized the Chinese government, maybe rightfully so, but you have Chinese companies coming in to attempt to implement 5G infrastructure in the country, which is then presented as a security risk. So the dialectical solution is that because there's a foreign uh, element trying to implement 5G, then we must make sure that it's done right. So that means we have to be very, res the government is passing laws to be very restrictive about how, how 5G is put in and that it is going to be put in without any like consensus from the people at all. And uh, there's, there's some weirdness about that, man. It, whether, whatever your take on the technology is, the fact that there's not really a channel or a method or a way that you can try to advise your own community to not implement it. There's some laws about like you can't uh, fight the installation of the infrastructure on pretty much any grounds, whether it's health or damaging your property value or, you know, hurting the scenery. There's, there's some weirdness, but it's, it's a, uh, but it's, but it's, you're, you're not, you're not, I'm, I'm not all of a sudden as a, as a member of this fascist police state, I don't understand because does, doesn't it make money for, for the corporations? Isn't that the most? Yeah. Yeah. Thing? So the dialectic, talking about human lives the and dialectic health, that is to shift the argument we, from we, whether or not we, we should do we, it we or not make money. to that whether or not we should let China do it or make the government take over the installation of it with the telecom companies. It's a shifting of the question, basically. The question should be, should we even do it or not? Right, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a mental trick, yeah, of taking it. Yeah. That, there's a, I it's done in a lot of places. You control I, uh, I the opposition of the I thing do. you want to do by creating your creating the opposition to the thing you want to do. It's kind of a manipulation tactic, but that's all I really wanted to say about that as a topic yeah. for 2019. Distraction. Like that's a 2019 thing for sure that we are seeing. That's a 2019 thing. I, I think. I think if I uh, if I wanted to 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 have a, a matching issue for 2019, it would be the torture of migrant children on our border deliberately by our government as a racist tactic to dehumanize and uh, and uh, and demean and i believe my intuition tells me that we're our government or some agents of the police of prison industry that this baby prisons or prison industrial complex for-profit prisons that are stealing children from migrants that have no power that are coming from war-torn countries and we don't even keep track of who their parents are they don't have i just learned that two days ago the, the new yorker published an article that, that that the trump administration pushed the zero tolerance policy so hard that they they have no network and no computer system to keep up with whose children are whose and i feel very strongly that they're probably selling those children into human trafficking situations that's just my that's my intuitive guess and i think if i had a pet project for 2019 it would be to get really fucking mad about that and and gather up in big tribes and go fucking do something it's crazy that. that that is actually so out in the open because that's the, a physical the, reality the human trafficking child trafficking has been a component of governments and the catholic church and there's there's been a worldwide network black market of that providing live humans for whatever you might want them for as a super rich person that doesn't really have a lot of things that excite them other than exerting power over others. And that's, there's also a, a real, a real big bunch of new information about that this year with the Jeffrey Epstein thing. Now that's just like a symptom of an overall much larger scenario, which is that it's the a, human trafficking networks do exist. They are connected in really closely to Hollywood and the government. And and Jeffrey Epstein was fucking murdered in front of all of our faces. Uh, basically, could have just been on television, and they wouldn't have cared. And they just took that man out. He was their he was their their pedophile pimp, and they took him out in front of us in a maximum security prison under the control of Bill Barr, who is the attorney general currently and nothing was done he was a friend of donald trump's for years he's a friend of bill clinton's for years bill clinton took 22 trips on the lolita express it's in the it's in the released flight logs um donald trump had 17 different phone numbers for epstein in his uh in his last known cell phone that was leaked um 
And it, there's no reason in the world not to believe that these migrant children are being sold into human slavery and uh, sex trafficking. And it actually is a, almost every reason to believe that they are. And uh, like I said on Facebook yesterday, if, if, uh, if you value the, the, uh, the economy, well, there's two things about that. They're telling us the cognitive dissonance of this is overwhelming because they're telling us that the economy is better than ever, but that we can't afford to feed refugee children. <laughs> And, but we can't afford and, to and bomb shit. And the flip shit. side of that, and it's very simple. We, yeah, it, not, yeah, exactly. We don't even need to take it that far. Though it's like best economy ever. Can't afford to feed kids, uh, and then we can't afford to keep up with whose parents belong to whose kids. And we deliberately demean. Like I want to read some quotes off of this, just because I know some people don't like to read as much and this is what podcasts are good for and i love to read to people uh, because i learned how to read when i was like three or four and i was always asked by the teacher to read to the class because uh it was fun for me and fun for them anyway i'm gonna do it you might have a screen share option not designed if you puns. look in your zoom window where we're chatting you might be able to like oh, yeah. show us what you're reading too we'll, we'll test it out okay okay cool yeah, let's try it. So uh, let me see if I can figure it out. Um, record, share. I don't know if that share button would be the right thing. Is this uh, face cam HD? Uh, share. What does that do? Desktop. Yeah, let's see what one? happens. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to do my desktop. Yeah. Okay, Google Chrome. So I'm going to share that right now. Okay, so I just decided to uh, to just scream really loudly about the uh, migrant camp stuff because I'm realizing that we're all trapped in our filter bubbles, and uh, and none of us are really listening to the news anymore. And that's by design. They want us to not listen to the fucking news anymore, and it's because the news is fucking terrifying. And so this is uh, and, and it's what they're doing is so out in the open now that it sounds like some Alex Jones shit. And all of a sudden, it's like Alex Jones making a lot more sense than he used to, you know what I mean? Or that he used to sound like. So these doctors, some of the few doctors that have been sent down to the, the migrant camps said, when asked if she saw signs, this is a pediatrician said, when asked if she saw signs of trauma in the children she examined, she said, I think all the children had signs of trauma, every single one. I see kids all day long and an 18 month old should not want you to examine them. They should scream and go to their mother. And a two year old should be a little bit fearful and then willing to talk. All of these children were inappropriately subdued I mean, they clearly were very fearful of me, but completely let me do my entire physical exam without any fight, which was entirely inappropriate for their age and behavior, age and their stage of behavior. And then on the border conditions at the Border Patrol facility in Clint, Texas, the conditions were the most degrading and inhumane conditions I've ever seen. And I've been representing asylum seeking children and their families in detention centers since 2007. This is unacceptable, it should not be happening in America. The conditions within which they're held could be compared to torture facilities. To deny parents the ability to wash their infants' bottles is unconscionable and could be considered intentional, mental, and emotional abuse. Trump officials are claiming there's nothing wrong with these conditions. The administration recently argued in court that children don't need basic necessities like soap, toothpaste, or a proper place to sleep. These warehouses are fucking lights on 24 hours a day. Other children are taking care of them. Uh, there's not adequate food, water, or sanitation inside the facilities. Uh, uh, teen mothers and other younger kids are being asked to care for infants and toddlers on their own with little or no help from any adults because the adults are fucking gone and they don't even know where they are and uh, this is all by design our, our machine of our evil fucking corporate demon government led by this pure demonic energy that's in the human form we call Donald Trump who is an illusion master who is the, the father of deception and lies is, is able to fucking convince somehow people can look at this and still scream about Trump 2020, make America great again. If, it, if this is America and this is great, goddamn America is what I'm saying. Goddamn America. It's like goddamn Mississippi. Goddamn. You know what I mean? I come from the, I come from the, 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 the hate state of Mississippi and, uh, you know, it, it gets me really fucking pissed off, man. And this is uh, this is all stuff that we're we've never done this before. This is a new thing to strip the kids from their parents. And Trump brought this in in 2017 under this this zero tolerance policy for some reason. And I know that he's a big man, big on profits. And so I know that there's a lot of profit to be made in children. There's a lot of profit to be made in humans. There's a lot of profit to be made in the prison industrial complex building these fucking torture centers and charging the government five million dollars a day to run yeah, these i guarantee the reason you know why saying? they don't have as so, much of the basic necessities is because just to clean the porta potties is probably like thirty thousand dollars a potty 
And so they do it like never. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. They're raping us. They're raping us. This is the taxpayer getting raped by the prison industrial corporate entity, demon beast, savage motherfuckers that we need to string up from every goddamn tree and, and beat them to death with sticks. Basically, all these people need to be on Nuremberg trials like the Nazi war criminals were put on after World War II, where it was decided that you can't you can't uh, you can't claim um, the orders where you, you can't get out of your guilt for, for he- crimes against humanity by saying it was orders that you were given. That's what the Nuremberg trials did for humanity is took away the excuse of government officials to be able to say, I was just doing what they told me to do, man. That's what all the Nazi war criminals that ran all these camps, which, by the way, are very similar to these migrant detention facilities. And guess what? We're like the fucking Germans, the good little Germans that were sitting in their little cute little towns and doing their cute little jobs. And they knew about these camps and they didn't do shit because it, they couldn't smell the stink of the bodies from where they were living at. In their yeah, and they didn't even have houses. the Internet to see you know the fucking saying? pictures in their face like this. Yeah, we can I mean, see it. Give me a break. We can see it. Yeah, I feel it too. So, I mean, I mean, it's occup, occupation, man. Yeah, I feel like we got it's we got numbers. They got the guns. Oh, well, I mean, got we got numbers, guns too. You know what I'm actually, and, America's uh, got America still has. We do guns. have guns too. And I and I actually I, 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 I yeah we do. And amen. And I uh, and I actually have never been. Uh, you know, I was raised shooting guns. I'm 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 really a good shot. Uh, and uh, I uh, I did a little gun practice when I was down in Mississippi. And my friend Dobelly Stray is training the Black Panthers for weapons training. And I feel like we should probably do that in our festival community is have a little gun range, you know, a little, little you know, training party, safety gun training parties. Because, you know, ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun, you know. And uh, and that's where they're, that's where they're, you know, it's it's really that way, man. And, like, if we, I mean, we got to take this yeah, shit back. Yeah, there's also they're something doing, to be said, too, amazing. that oh, part of – well, there's been like amazing levels of programming done on the American people since World War II up to now. And it's been at the hands of a lot of different nefarious parties. But the overall goal has been the same, which is to fundamentally change and alter the mentality of the American people to the point where they accept stuff like this, where you can share a picture like that on Facebook and nobody, no, no militia group goes and blows the doors off of that thing. Part of the programming, part of the programming well, is I'll to gradually this. get them more and more accustomed to atrocities to the point where it's just like normal business. Them. But also, us, say us, say us. It's us. It's not them. It's us. Getting us more and more accustomed right. to atrocities. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's happened to me too. Me and you ain't. Do, me, me and you ain't. Me and you That's, haven't done well, anything. We've, we're, it it to, helps to, to talk it about it. You know I mean, we're talking about it. I've, I've given us the credit to talk about it. Yeah, I'm not trying to attack you. I'm just saying that, like. I'm going down there. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm fucking. I'm, I'm off for five weeks. I think your I'm camera's the best there. weapon to and take. I've got though, some, I've got some, in this scenario. Oh yeah, I'm taking my camera and I'm taking I'm taking this live broadcast uh, technology and I'm taking some food. And if anybody wants to go with me, anybody wants to throw down, I got some Spanish speakers in the house. Uh, we got to start somewhere, man. And uh, and I feel like uh, it's like I, I just really I want to drop some knowledge on everybody because this is something that um, my Black Panther friend kind of uh, made me more aware of. It was the 50th anniversary of his death the other day. Have you ever heard of Fred so. Hampton? OK, so I encourage everybody that's listening to go and Google Fred Hampton. Fred Hampton was a 21 year old Black Panther revolutionary who was murdered in his sleep by the United States government at age 21 because he was such a powerful political force and revolutionary. He famously said they can jail a revolutionary, but they can't jail the revolution. And that if, you know, basically he was just like Martin Luther King, man, just like so many of our uh, saints and prophets through the ages. It's like, you know, you're going to die. You know, I'm ready to die, you know? And he, and he, he got capped like immediately because of who he was and what his, he stepped into his power and the power structure fucking hated it. And that's what happens, though. But like, I feel like the more of us activate, the more of us step into our power. They can't no, and they really us, can't just you know take I mean? people out and that are it's... vocal and talk- talkative because then. It... <laughs> oh no, they can. <laughs> they totally can. They they killed Jeffrey Epstein in front of all of us. He was a billionaire. They can well, kill any of us. Yeah, and they will for sure. Like I feel like the more I talk about this, the more danger. I've been pulled over and searched twice in 2019. I feel like the more I talk about it, the like like Tupac Shakur said. He was, you know, he was a black activist and his, uh, he was the son of a Black Panther revolutionary. Uh, his mom, Afini, was a, uh, was a Black Panther uh, activist. And he famously said, you know, he was brought up in, uh, in acting schools in New York. He was not a thug. 
He became a thug after the U.S. government started attacking him. He famously said, I never had a criminal record until I made a music record. Because once he started using his voice, the fucking authorities, the pigs started coming after him. And the pigs basically locked him up for a year and a half for something that he didn't do. And then he went nuts and he got he got sucked into a deal with the devil with Suge Knight and went out to the West Coast and made all that all that really angry music like hit him up. I feel like everybody needs to listen to hit him up, which is Tupac raging anger, righteous anger about how he got shot by some of his friends. Anyway, that's a separate story. It's a beautiful story. But they try to break us. You know, they try to attack us and they try to lock us up and they try. If you if you come out and step into your power, the power structure doesn't like it. And, you know, that's just something that we all need to be aware of. But I feel like the more we can activate, the more we can wake each other up with our psychedelic white light sorcery <laughs> magic and our and our beautiful music community and our open, intuitive love of each other and learning how to play music and learning how to make art and stepping the fuck away from the system and stepping into our power as creators. Because I just had this epiphany the other day that basically, you know, whether deist or theist or whatever, the whole essence of this whole thing is love, man. That's why that's like, like that, the, the one thing that made the Christian philosophy resonate so hard was that love is the greatest power that you can have. Nothing can really beat love. You know what I mean? It's the, it's the essence of all that is. It's the reason everything exists. And that creativity is the language of love. It's the language of God. Whether or not you even believe in God, Create, we're, we're here, right? There's a, there's a creation that exists, regardless of whether you, like, we're not, none of us know how this got here, but this is, this is all creative. All of our life is creative life, right? It wouldn't be here if, if, if it wasn't cr creation happening. You see births happening. We know creation happens. That's not arguable, right? And how does creation happen in a birth? Love, right? So love and creation are the eternal languages that never die. You know, like that Percy by Shelley poem about I am Ozymandias, look upon my works, you mighty in despair. It's, a, it's, a, it's about the Egyptian kings who bragged about their big fucking dicks and how they had everything. Well, guess what? Those kings and their kingdoms fall. But guess what stood the test of time is the art, the artist that made the statue of the king, you know, because art is eternal. Creativity is eternal. Love is eternal. And that's what we got to step into. That's the that's whole a good point, interpretation you know? of that poem. I love to I love thinking about that. Thanks for bringing that to mind. And the love component oh, where it comes in is that there the revolution go. has to happen in consciousness before it can happen in the, the 3D world. Because if we did just like swarm the government buildings and dest destroy all the edifices of the powers that should not be, we would still have the problems that got us into that dynamic in the first place, which is uh, kind of a rejection of, well, in this day and age, it all has to do with rejecting our personal responsibility as creators for the life we create for ourselves, And the fact that over not that many generations, we've sneakily been thieved of a lot of our self-reliance in the form of corporations selling you a shittier version of something that our ancestors used to make for themselves. So luckily we have the technology yeah, to, you know, if we can actually harness the technology properly and not be harnessed by the technology and corralled by it, that's the key. But that's it, man. Uh, I wanted that's to bring it. up the fact that, yeah, people do get taken out or silenced over bringing things like this to light. There's, this is going to be kind of a longer anecdote, but I have to tell you guys about another cool thing in 2019. This is a good thing. There's a really wild show called Hellier. It's spelled Hell I E R, and it had a second season come out this year, not very long ago actually. It's a show that I had the a couple of the creators of on the podcast not long after their first season, and it's really crazy. In a good way, they are paranormal investigators who follow a lead about goblins coming out of caves and harassing people in Kentucky and wind up stumbling into a huge nest of really strange paranormal and possible extraterrestrial or ultra-terrestrial activity. But uh, one thing that comes out in the second season, the new season that relates to what we've been talking about, is that a woman comes forward and emails the main investigator of this team and tells them about all this stuff that connects to what they'd been investigating already without having made it public. She talked about the the goblins and, and the caves and it was in, she was from Kentucky, but what she brought up that was super troubling was the presence of a cult that was there sacrificing children, 
her, uh, sacrificing people, a crazy sex magic ritual death cult that was potentially the whole town that she was in could have been involved with it. And as soon as she sent these emails to the main guy, Greg, she winds up being put in jail on charges that she claimed are not even real and like jail for a long time, long time. So mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's definitely real. And that definitely will happen to, if we start trying to take the power structure reins, that's going to happen to a lot of us. Yeah. In life, we know? have to be ready for that a, potential, I guess, but that's it. also, yeah, you got to be as reminder. There's also, I, I mean, this is less provable, but I think there's the power of synchronicity that we all experience in our, especially in our festival bubble. The synchronicity becomes crazy, and yeah, and it becomes uh, every day, and you kind of take. Yeah, it but if you're following you know, synchronicity almost. from through your self love and self knowledge, you know, actually paying attention to the way your inner experience reflects in the outer world, following your what makes you excited, but also not shying away from what's scary, what you know needs to be done, what you know is right. I think synchronicity steps in to protect us to a large degree. I mean, if it's your time, it's your time and oh, yeah, you'll be dude. okay. That's our magic. Your time yeah. up comes. That's it. That's it. That's it. Well, you know, it's like you look at it's to the thing and say like, a, like these, the, the greatest, the greatest of our, of our human achievers they knew not to be afraid of death really because it's you know like and and i think that they they were able to tap into their synchronicities like you ever listen to martin luther king's speech he gave the night before he was murdered in memphis it's it's beautiful and he says i know i'm not gonna be there with you you know like i know i'm not i'm not gonna make it to the promised land with you like he he, he knew that he wasn't gonna get across that they were gonna kill him you know what i mean and there's dude we've got so many i mean yeah, I don't. I don't want to derail from from that that idea too much, but it's like I, I love the idea that the synchronicities can be the pathways to to, to lead you away. Like I feel like I, I deal. I, I try. Like I've been in so much trouble with the police over the years that I uh, and I've been harassed and like fucked with by the police so much over the years. Starting out in the police state of Mississippi, I feel like I got a I got an advance on the on the on the growth of the police state in America because Mississippi's always been a slave control state. And so um, their police have always had a real strong arm and an iron fist. And, uh, you know, it's uh, but anyway, the synchronicities and the intuitions can lead you away from the pigs, man, because they don't they don't feel and smell those things. Their 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 de their detection devices don't uh, don't read on the same levels as our human intuition does, you know. And, uh, you know, there's there's unfortunately, I think, some examples of some dark, dark wizard type, you know, government agents that do sense those pathways you know and uh i just that's something that um you know i don't know if we can afford to worry about but i think that that's i love that idea that um that you know it can guide the synchronicity can be a path that can guide you to higher truth of self and that i love the way you put that about the internal and the external world noticing that those those two things as above so below you know the like i just had this breakthrough in my own life in these past few days and as soon as i broke through literally like a hobbit door opened in my life and allowed me to escape this trap that i'd set for myself you know and it happened with a police encounter actually i got searched on the way home from mississippi and dude was being very aggressive trying to trying to trigger me calling me uh you know everything and, and trying to um trying to threaten to kill my what the fuck what, he, what was he calling was you like what, what even how'd you get pulled over i mean can you tell this in detail this is crazy right. i mean who could fuck with jamie oh, yeah. seed like that you're okay. such a nice guy <laughs> well, they try, then, uh, you know, it's something <laughs> they try to something they can smell something on me. I don't know, man. It's always been a problem. And, uh, and, and it's, uh, luckily for me, I don't have any charges yet. I don't know if I can, uh, you know, I want to make this kind of a, a maybe a, a bookmark in my life because as of now I have no, I have no charges. I've never been convicted of anything. I've been, uh, I've been in two institutions i've been locked in a county jail for six weeks one time in mississippi in a condemned county jail on my way to rehab uh that's a crazy story and i uh i also um yeah man i i, I was in some some felony drug trouble like 12 years ago down in damascus arkansas that i ended up getting out of um because of uh what's up rally uh yep yeah. Well, I'll keep keep going with what happened with this police encounter. Yeah. I just brought Bradley on. We're going to open up to Collins okay. in a minute. And uh, hey, Bradley, can you cool. drop for a second and reconnect in just a moment? 
He looks like he's gone. I think he from my disabled side. video, but uh, we'll. I don't want to remove him manually because okay. I want it to be able right, to reach so, so, yeah, yeah, continue man. that story and we're going to open up to call-ins because we're getting close to the second hour, which is cool because I've never done like call-ins to a yeah, live yeah, show yeah. before where they actually get to come on with us. And this is pretty cool. I'm excited. And I think yeah, Bradley's I think got some good dope, stuff man. to say well, about so anyway. protecting ourselves on a metaphysical level. And that's going to be really key. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah, man. Well, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll relinquish the floor. No, I want to hear more about that police encounter real quick. Hello. But yeah, say hey, Bradley. Say hey. Hey, guys. Okay, yes. The police encounter sounds very interesting. And it is snowing in southern Arkansas right now. Oh, nice. So we're bringing in some purity with your y'all's words. Right, snow. <laughs> nice. I love it. I know. <laughs> That seems that seems very appropriate, man. That's I feel it like uh, you know we got we got the you know the full moon rises on December twelfth at twelve 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 followed by Friday the thirteenth. Man, man, that's gonna be our, it's gonna be a, a yeah, and, and a lot of us that are sensitive are already feeling the impacts of this full moon oh, yeah, coming yeah, in because yeah. anytime you learn any shamanic path or you know, occult path, esoteric knowledge, the moon as it is waxing gets stronger. It's not, a lot of people think that the full moon is the only day it's strong. No, 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 no. Oh, you can it, feel it's, it, it ebbs it and flows. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely, man. I feel like this is like, that is such a weird synchronous thing. Like a, uh, like the, like the total eclipse gives you that like cosmic. Ah, there I am. Hey, what's up, Bradley? Hey, hey, hey. Sorry, I was having yeah. some, because it is snowing, we were getting ice earlier, so my internet is all over the place. Loud today. and clear right now, though, buddy. Yeah, it sounds oh, good. Oh, yay. Man. That's wonderful. <laughs> right on, man. Glad to have you with us, dude. What you got oh, yeah. on some, I need some, I need some spiritual protection. <laughs> yes, I mean, like, kind of tying into what you guys were talking about um, and what I have been learning about, I recently moved uh, to southern Arkansas, which kind of uh, a little town that borders uh, Louisiana. And so when I came down here, it's a little bit different from northwest Arkansas, where I hail from the Ozarks. You know, yeah. up there, Magical we don't really deal with, right? We don't deal with much voodoo, hoodoo type stuff. But down here, the biggest thing I have been doing for oh, clients, hoodoo. yes, is reversal and you know, like uh, uh, releasing hexes, hexes and conjure work. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the African so, magic. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And so I have been going toe magic. to toe with some really negative the stones in the cross pathway. Yeah. Energies. And yeah. so I had to, you know, I had to learn this stuff. I had to educate myself on this path of conjure work and hoodoo so I could understand how to reverse it for people. Because I was having people come in and saying, oh, I've been shot at. And I was like, what? You got shot at on your way here? And come to find out, that's an old saying for if someone has crossed you or hexed yes. you or put a curse on yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad you're bringing this up, dude. That's, you know, that's yeah. the heart of the, a lot of the early blues music. Like Robert Johnson talks oh. about stones in my past way. And it was oh, yeah. like, that, and, 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 Right. And being hot footed. And, and what's bad is we have so much of the conjure culture and voodoo culture is coming into, you know, mainstream media and people are hearing about it and thinking they can just jump in and spread hot foot powder on every enemy they got. But what they need to remember <laughs> is that this work has to be justified. You know, that's important. If you do, if you do stuff that is. So how do we put Flat foot hoodoo on Donald Trump. Can we do it right now? <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just I don't kidding. think I'm just we kidding. have to worry, worry about doing that. Know. I think there are some voodoo queens and conjure workers already yeah, I don't at work think that's doing our that. Role for a because, lot of uh, bless them. No, it's not. I'm <laughs> joking. I was totally joking. I don't. I don't want to work with that energy at all. I really don't. No, I know. <laughs> See, and it's funny because I didn't want to work with any of that energy, but now I'm finding myself taking, you know, things like that off of clients. So that they yeah. can actually get back to stability because stuff like hot foot powder that is so popular and people reach for it as the first thing to do should actually be your last line of defense. Because honestly, this literally can kick people out of their homes, 
make them lose jobs, make them lose relationships, lose their children, lose their car, lose everything. And so you really, oh, really yeah, got to hate pay somebody for it. Like to do if that. you're casting something at someone else, you yes. pay the cost of whatever it's, it is that they're, whatever you're taking away from absolutely. them. Absolutely. Well, in root work, you're actually taught that if the work is justified, you do not have any bad uh, side effects. So there's a lot of people that think, okay, oh, well, they hurt them. my feelings. <laughs> you know, we have a generation that is plagued with very, very light, thin skin. So you yeah. got to grow some balls, guys, and realize you can't kick someone out of their house or their home or their livelihood just because they looked at you sideways. You know, it's, you really, really like, maybe if they like murdered your sister, this would be the type of thing you would want to use this energy with. But, and you know, a lot of people are justified in doing that with our culture right now. But going back to the toxic masculinity thing, a lot of women are using this at, to counteract the toxic masculinity movement. And now we're getting a toxic femininity of this man hating women covens that are attacking Yeah, and then you get men. MGTOW, the whole men going their own way movement. And all of it is quite, quite mm -hmm. crazy because I'm uh, pretty sure that the ma masculine and feminine components are required for the c eternal creative principle to actually work. Yes, inclusivity is the most important thing that I keep hearing for 2020 coming up because 2019 I think has been excellent in showing us that you can't be on either side of the extreme. You can't be a hundred percent exclusive in masculinity and you can't be a hundred percent exclusive in feminism. You have to find a balance of both. And when there is a healthy balance, you know, ideally all sides strive because at that point, we're taking care of one another. We're working together. And hey, so what's heal. something Jamie can do that's... before he goes on his uh, mission that could invoke a little bit of spiritual protection, ward off of uh, the wrong eyes, you know, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that what's cool about sy synchronistic protection is that it almost puts you in stealth mode without you having to actually like wear all black and creep around. Yes. Uh, the I think – the thing that you need to remember is in doing works like that is always, always do a clearing of your energy. That way you don't bring any negativity into it because that is what, if there is, you know, human trafficking and sex cults and death cults, like you guys have been talking about behind the scenes of this stuff, you know, like we just see what they want us to see. What's going on behind closed doors could be a whole other picture, especially in the communities surrounding these and even getting them to the facilities. When you're walking into it, do some reversals and clearing on your own energy. That's going to be the number one protection for you because then if there is any negativity or black magic at work, it will not have a foothold to grab onto and drag you yeah, down. Yeah, uh, meditating under a tree, and then it, just that, crouching down and touching your palm to the earth uh, and consciously releasing. The best way I have actually seen to remove this is, and it's very simple, uh, it's from shamanism to sage yourself. But you can also take a black candle and wipe yourself down, or it's called brushing. You brush from the bottom. You know, you've seen shamans do this with sage. Take the black candle before it's lit. Yeah. Wipe it all the way down your body, especially on your shoulders, behind your neck, on your chest, down your legs, the back in front of your hands. And then do down your feet and legs, the bottoms of your feet from heel to toe. And then light the candle, and that will take all of that negativity you just took off and burn it away. Oh, nice. Okay. That's cool. an excellent clearing. I love yeah, that. and on, on an energetic level, yeah. too, like electrically speaking, you can ground just about anything that's in your field by mm -hmm. just touching the earth with your skin, and our shoes keep us from that. So, mm -hmm. Jamie, you need a proper wizard staff mm -hmm. because if you get a, if you get a yeah. staff – wooden stick with a crystal on top something good like selenite that draws in energy Focus. it's like a lightning rod so anything that's around is mm -hmm. yeah i've got a big old awesome selenite rod that i uh yeah, yeah. use that touch yeah. it to the ground while you're 
holding it and it draws stuff into it <laughs> and then puts it into the ground grounds it like lightning strike hitting a house that has a lightning rod if that makes sense it's uh it's pretty interesting too what kind of things can happen when we're not grounded i was just checking out a whole bunch of research about how some paranormal or maybe even like extraterrestrial abduction experiences things like that can be potentially triggered by ungrounded weird energy like on an electromagnetic level that is inter inter a person's sure. field and then when they do touch metal or they do all of a sudden kind of uh accidentally release it it comes out all crazy and they see something something uh -huh. weird or they get they feel something weird and anyway we can definitely precaution against that with really simple tools and I, that's what's useful about or that's what's great about the truth is it's usually pretty simple and even a, a kid can understand it and practice it Right. And I think what what that is, is uh, it's kind of like I just saw an article on this, like there was a Mothman scene at an airport recently and, and I posted it. I was like, uh oh, usually that happens before some tragedy befalls. You know, it's like a harbinger of doom. But it's interesting that the moth is coming up because like you're talking about as you're awakening or if you are already born with gifts, which I believe a lot of our millennial generation and the boomer generation with us and the, the generations to come, as we um, diversify and our, you know, America's the melting pot, we have lineages and gifts that are waking up again, being reactivated. And every time you do this, it's like a, it's like a candle in the dark. And so negative energy immediately goes, oh, who's that? Like, Oh, we got we got a new one. Like so yeah. you are gonna be hit at the very beginning, especially on when you first start on the path, because these negative energies feed off of that yeah, light. Activating lights that you, you do. up so in a, it's in a essential. Sense. Yes. So it's essential to learn how to protect yourself because it's it's just it's so important to be able to manipulate the energy field around you so that nothing is being sapped away. And like you said, a staff works great for that. It's as a tool and a lightning rod to bring in good energy. That way it is staying cleansed. Also, um, Reiki helps. Uh, I've, I've used that a lot. And your intent. And as a shaman, and uh, now I guess I could call myself a root worker because I've been training under that as well and realized as I was training it that these are things I've learned my whole life from my family in the Ozarks. Just little little spells and sayings and Bible verses. Yes, yeah. folk magic that I'm like, oh my gosh, we've Bradley, done Bradley, we're getting a lot of requests life. to see your cat up know. close. In the... <laughs> cat. You... Uh, also... He's so shy. Jamie, uh, in the chat, Brandon <laughs> Arnold said he's going to electroform a staff for you. So you better hold him to that because that sounds like oh, an epic lovely. creation. Oh, oh, oh uh, awesome. Yeah, no, that means good for his word. I've got uh, electroform magic all around me because of that beautiful soul. He, uh, he, he electroformed a honeycomb onto my uh, fisheye lens cap. It's one of the dopest things that I have in my possession. And uh, yeah, that's, I'm honored to have wizards like him around me to help, you know, help, uh, you know, wake me up and bring me back from sleeping and different things. You know, we all just kind of like hold each other up and, you know, stimulate each other. And I don't know, that's that's awesome. I would that gladly rock a, a Barnold magical staff at any point, you know. I appreciate the, uh, the tips on this too, because like, I, honestly, man, I feel just like, it is it is dark magic that's allowing this stuff to happen you know it's it, there's they're, they're working on multiple levels when you can go when you can see such obvious fraudulent dishonest speech and dishonest things being put forth so openly and brazenly there's got to be some kind of a, 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 a additional it's a hex in and of itself planned. actually it's like the, for sure. the news putting you in yeah. a, a bad mood because magic. of showing you so it's dark. It's Sith. Because if Sith someone told you about something bad Sith. that was happening yes, that Jedi required Mike. our attention, that would be one thing. But they put they spin it in a way that that, that it's just like frustratingly 
filled with bullshit too. Well, Obama, Obama always did the same thing. When you think about it, you know, Obama always did that. You know, so you don't need to worry right. about it because Obama did that. They took children away and you didn't say nothing until Obama, you know, it's like, that's the, that's one of the misdirections is like, somebody I'm just else. I'm going to tell everyone so right now. Up. So, you, you know, know what I mean? and you can look like, this up if you want, but Alex Jones is Bill Hicks and he is a disinformation agent. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding. Absolutely. Hey, yeah, he is. just go, he's a just dangerous go Google sure. that. He's very good. I mean, at the internet gets scrubbed of stuff like this periodically, but do a little deep research if you need to find somebody with a good point by point list comparison of why Alex Jones is I've, the comedian I've, Bill yeah. Hicks, I've, and it's fucking ridiculous. I just, I just, my, my only thing with that, chance is that Bill Hicks was such a bright light and a force of like good humor and good, uh, good intentions that it, it would just have to mean that he became. Yeah, I know it's tragic. Somehow. I know, and I know. I'm, I didn't want to believe it either. That's the very reason why I didn't want to believe it for a long time, but I, I do believe I, it I, now. <laughs> I refuse to believe it. <laughs> yeah. And I say no to that, but I, I love that idea. And it's no, it's we're going to talk about this off the air. I'm going to find the info that you need to be convinced for <laughs> that. I love, you know, man, I love, I love being convinced. I the fact that Jones became sure. such a blatant I, statist but, after Trump came into office is a pretty big red flag. Oh yeah. No, here's my, here's something I want to give you back. And I want to give it to everybody at home that wants to go do a little research, go look at it's called beware the Jabberwock. It's a this American life episode of the podcast where they dive into Alex's childhood and they find out some shit. And you know, that's Ira glass. That's, reputable journalism they're like one of the most beautiful podcasts and they've been you know it's a radio show for 25 years i fucking love this american life i will fight anybody that thinks that they're not out <laughs> i don't humanity. know a lot you know about I mean? it they're good good stuff dude oh my god so beware the jabberwock they go and they dive into alex jones's childhood and you know he's been on the air for like 20 hours a day for the past 25 years so he's said a lot of words you know so there's a lot of records of him saying things you know so they they kind of pieced together what he said his childhood was like. But what it really was, he got run out of his fucking high school on a rail by the entire community because he was such an evil piece of shit. Like he was like hated universally by literally everyone to the point that he got gang beat and his family was forced to move from his original hometown in Texas because he was so demonic that he would uh, wow. t try to convince his high school friends that he was the devil and that he would like spit blood out of his mouth. This is true shit. Like, go look this up. Like he, and somehow he's become an international figure and it took Ira Glass in 2019 to write, to, to go look up this American life. And that's the, that's the state of our journalism is that it, we've gotten so distracted and so lazy that something so openly obvious, like if anybody would have just gone to his hometown and talked to his friends from his childhood, we could have heard this 20 years ago and, and totally di disempowered him then. But it's trust me well, everybody needs to listen thing to, to realize here is like with a character like amazing. that is it's a cul-de-sac it's I, I would call it the cul-de-sac before the gold mine it <coughs> leads you down the path you're trying to go on but then takes you in circles before you get all the way to the core of the truth and it's by design mm -hmm. i think that's why characters like that have so much content they're constantly like all day every weekday streaming it's because as long as they're talking, you can't think. The more they talk, right. the, the less you can think. The idea it's is, a spell. as soon as you follow yeah. a man, what you need to be thinking about this is what you do. You know, he's really well, good. Krishna Murthy has a, a great quote that I'll paraphrase. It's something like, uh, "Following as soon as you follow a, a person, a man, or an institution, instead of letting truth be the guide, you're no longer on your path. That is it. Pa you're off the path. Yeah, correct. Absolutely." If you can, if you can deny objective reality in favor of what somebody else has told you, you're under control. You're under someone's mind control, and you need to check your whole entire fucking structure of, of analysis of reality. You know, and we're all, you know, I mean, I think that that mind control stuff is so. You know, the MK Ultra program in the fifties and sixties where they used uh, they were starting fifties and sixties. What you talking about? Seventies, eighties, and nineties. It's, it's still going yeah. on. It's still going on. That's what I was about to say. Is that they're just right. way better at it now. They tested their apparatus and they made that, you know, they made Charlie Manson do that shit. I feel like from the Vacaville tests, you know, that nobody really talks about how did Charlie Manson learn how to brainwash uh, young hippie white girls into going and murdering. Uh, it's people the cult him. that I brought up earlier, uh, but you know, it's, the, uh, it's ancient knowledge, ancient knowledge. And it's been uh -huh. mesmerism, things like well, that. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, personality mirroring and, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, it's, there's a whole strategy. But it's like that got one of my point with Nancy specifically is that, and I hate to even say his name, but, uh, you know, he, uh, he learned that from somewhere. He didn't come up with that on his own. Well, That's, right. That was a you can look, you can dig into his case and what that he got up to that got him in trouble had a lot well, to do with it. potentially being an initiation into a larger group or a more secretive group that they sent it. It was the process church, the process church in San Francisco. It's uh, I have the original copy of a book that was banned. Uh, my cousin Rob, that was he was actually was a pen Whoa. pal of Charlie Manson in prison. He, we, yeah, my friend Taft has uh, the, the the letters that Charlie wrote him, and we were all freaked the fuck out because we got letters from Charlie Manson and my cousin's trap house that was smoked weed in every day. And uh, I was like, the fucking family knows where you live, Rob. And he's like, yeah, dude, but I mean, he's like, you know, my cousin was just this crazy like hilarious Mansonite, you know, that loved to, to read up on this. Anyway, I have a book. I wish I had it with me. It's called The Family by Ed Sanders. And uh, it describes in great detail. It's like the flip side of the coin of the Helter Skelter narrative that Vincent Bugliosi, the prosecutor, put forth. And, uh, and, and the family book to delves much more into the occult side and the dark magic side of what was going on in that world. And there was a lot deeper connections than Manson. You know, a lot of those musicians in that time were a part still of that. Still are. And, uh, and still a thing. Yeah, it's, yeah, still are for sure, man. And you look at, like, I was reading about Elizabeth Sanders last night, you know, or Elizabeth Warren, I'm sorry. Um, and not to get too political, but, like, you know, she was working for the for the corporate devil uh, as an attorney. This this left-wing uh, green, green heart now, you know, that's preaching this gospel of, whatever the hell she's talking about. But she, you know, uh, she was fighting in court 20 years ago for the coal companies to be able to uh, not have to clean up their messes and stuff. You know, it's like these, the, the deception level and the, and the, and the duplicity nature of, of, of this, uh, of this big corporate state that we're in is so, is so shocking once you start scratching the surface. Of it. And I feel like one of the dangers is of going too far down these artificial rabbit holes they've set up for us because like the mm -hmm. child migrant thing, that's their not mazes. a deep, that's not a deep rabbit hole conspiracy. That's up fucking front and obvious, you know, and the more we can, the more we spend our time delving into weird fucking uh, yarn ball rabbit holes of, of possibilities, the less we think about the clear and present dangers. Of yeah. You can right go on forever with that us, without like acting that. because you're still trying to figure it all out. Like who's figure in charge. Yeah. There's no then, look, one here's thing a, or person. Here's the good charge. example. It's, somebody that I want somebody that i won't name. yeah it's like what are we doing to stop it but like if you can get so far diluted like this is a good example not i won't name any names or anything but somebody that i love recently got so down in the rabbit hole of conspiracies and got so delusional based off of QAnon yeah. and shit on youtube and all these crazy fucking dude listen so he ends up break with reality ends up thinking barack obama and hillary and whoever are in the woods outside their house and uh ends up trying to hurt somebody in their family because they thought that they were that's the hex them. man that's literally uh, a hex the, being cast on that yeah. person through the media they're taking in big yeah. time yes, yes exactly and there's a and lot so of that's that. what i'm saying i want to warn everybody stay with the truth you know stay with the obvious truth if you if you're if you're thinking you're the only one that knows something you're probably in in a hex you're probably down a rabbit hole of a of a, of a mind trip and a that's mind how trap. a lot of and so Sorry, and that's how oh, yeah. a lot of the media works is it is, you know, it's it's spelled out for you. And, and what is the root word of, of spelling is, is a spell. So oh. it, the more you read, these words are put in there in a certain ways to trigger a subconscious reaction inside of you. It's it's like the like that God machine they used instead of sending the you know the beams into your mind they're sending words that trigger mm -hmm. a software that is yeah. already in there because the we were all are programmed words. with disney movies and all those shows we watched as kids and so it's just it brings up that programming again and i gotta again shout and out again. to that yep you know how they okay, you know how they think i'm sorry go ahead you know how they think that the uh, like a, a a big idea of how the MK Ultra program triggered people like the Searhan Searhan killers and the uh, uh -huh. the guys that killed all of our uh, greatest revolutionaries of the 60s, they had trigger words. It was a spell like a, a catcher in the rye. You know there was a, there was a book there was a page in the book like the Manchurian Candidate movie uh, was a really good example of trying to decode how these trigger words these spells 
once they heard a trigger code or a trigger phrase, it would it would wake up their programming. Yes, they would go it's do buried the in their subconscious, and it works kind of like deep training. Like, you know, if an assassin is woke up from sleep, it doesn't matter if it's their mom or their loved one or whatever, they're going to, yeah, you it's know. Co- they create compartmentalized personalities. <laughs> come out, they com- fracture the person's consciousness mm-hmm. by basically tormenting them to the level that they have to split their waking conscious mind from their actual physical reality experience. And then the important thing I want to bring out yes. about MK ultra or mind control experiments and programs being run on us by the inheritors of the Nazi science that literally Nazi scientists came to the United States project, project paperclip, paperclip started, project paper got all this clip. stuff rolling after world war two, because it, you had to change the mentality of the American people to actually defeat the American people in and take away their freedom. But well, what happens you know, now is the, the power, the power is the, the power is the, the, let, me dro- let me drop this real quick. The, what happens so, right now is yeah, so. we have a different form of MK ultra and it's in the form of a lot of new age and veiled ve- deceptive spiritual teachings. Right? So we got to be really careful about oh, yeah. all the stuff that flo- floats around right there that out there right now, that seems like it has positive intentions, but is kind of, uh, enforcing magical child thinking, like regressive mentalities about reality. It's like, oh yeah, the, magical, the law of the attraction. All I need to do is think thinking about, about what like I want everyone's and it will immediately a, appear and I don't have to do anything. You know, you have to do, you have to act as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, take action, right? Yeah, yeah. Though that's that's a spell that's putting on. You know, the the less you act, I've 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 fought that recently so much in my own mind and in my own heart and with friends that I love. Like, not acting is not active you know that's not it's not helping anything but not doing anything you know it's exactly what they want us to think is that we can somehow be revolutionary by shutting the fuck up and sitting in our house on fucking facebook that's not doing anything speaking of people out there on facebook uh, real quick if you're on the stream right now and you want to call in message me send me a direct message or post in the chat and i'll send you the call in link i don't want to just post it in case we got like 50 people all at once so i'll try to do it in a one at a time thing. But uh, if you have anything you want to throw in with us about 2019 or about stuff we've been talking about or what's coming up in 2020, we'd love to get more call-ins because it's kind of cool. It's been awesome having Bradley. <laughs> this is super fun. Yeah, dude. This is way cool, man. I am so impressed yeah. with our technology. We're <laughs> cyborgs right now. Elon Musk is so what? right. We're fusing with <laughs> We are becoming one with the machine and using it for the good. We are the oracle in the Uh, matrix. Hello. Yeah, we are. Would you like to no (laughs) see? They're fresh. Free your mind, Neo. Free your mind. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you're all Neo. That's how that works. Yes, we are. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. We are all the one. So many people missed that message. (laughs) Yeah. Well, they kind of they kind of diluted it when they continued to make movies. That movie didn't True. move any further. Uh, True. You know, when he flies off in the end of the first one, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. But yeah, no, I love talking about that uh, that movie a lot recently, man. It's just it's it's a it's like a Bible of sorts. There's so much truth in that, you know, um, and it's uh, in analogies, and metaphors. But talking about, I don't know. I want to touch base back on the police thing because I just want to. I, I feel like I learned something the other day that I want to share with everybody. And I know that it relates to like my my friends in the in the black community. We've seen so many people get murdered at the ex. I'm going to say executed at the hands of the police because we had this horribly tragic situation in Fayetteville a few nights ago where a, where a good man, a good police officer, by all accounts, was executed. They called it an execution by a by a, 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 a terrible murderer, you know, that came and did that for for apparently no reason. We don't know, but. Um, it caused a, a flip side conversation, you know, God rest his soul. That's terrible. You know what I mean? Like no, the, any human life being taken, that's terrible. I'm not trying to, to, to put anything bad or talk anything bad about that man or anything, but on the flip side, I can only talk about my own experience and there it's a really, really, uh, difficult situation to be violated by the, by the forces of the police state and maintain your calm and not fall for their escalation tactics because that's definitely what most of them try to do is to fight and to escalate and you cannot win on the side of the road you have to know your rights you have to study with the aclu and figure out 
what your rights are. Am I being detained? What's your probable cause? No to the search all the time, no matter what, even especially if you don't have anything in there, because fuck them, you're an American. You have a right to not have unreasonable detention and not be unreasonably searched about your person. You have a right to privacy in America still. And so in this situation the other night, I wanted to tell about this because 12 years ago, I got in trouble temporarily in Damascus, Arkansas. I was coming from the legendary festival ground at Camp Zoe, which is a, a, like one of the craziest party spots that ever existed. I, I was going down to Mississippi to a blues festival to do a documentary on an old blues man named Willie King, who I never got to do the documentary because I got apprehended by the Popos and uh, got into a year-long battle for my freedom. And uh, he died. Willie died before I got the chance to go do the, do the project. But Willie was a white light wizard of mojo and an angel and uh and everybody needs to go support his uh family by going and listening to his music he has an album called one love on spotify he's been gone for like 10 years now but he was a saint and a prophet and uh his album that one love album talks a lot about his philosophy of love and he was a uh, he was a, a prophet anyway so um i got apprehended on my way down to this blues festival where i was i had my car full of a I just bought a Martin guitar to learn how to play guitar. I had just had, I just had my, uh, it was back when I was still doing mostly video before I got into photography, really. I was so excited, but I had a little bit of illegal substances on me stupidly. And, uh, and I got pulled over in a, in a, uh, a notorious speed trap town by an ignorant officer that was abusive and, uh, just stupid and violent. And he, I was 27 years old. I was, uh, you know, at the time I have like, you know, blonde hair and looked like a hippie kid more than I do now, because now I know that you can either look like a hippie or you can be one, but doing both at the same time is fucking dangerous to your health. I just cut my hair. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> you got to have that hair. Babylon cloak. I, my, my friend, my friend Mateo calls it the Babylon cloak. You got to put your cloak on to go out in this police state and not, uh, not put their radars like up, you know, and it's not, you know, it, like a fox. Yeah, that's right. You gotta, you gotta. Yeah. Be, when uh, you first start waking up, you want to express yourself real, he like real crazy and creatively and heavily. Then you realize the higher form of self-expression is I can. to actually I can. become more like, I don't know, easily communicating with uh, people that would otherwise put a wall up because of how you look, you know, sacrificing well, one form of self-expression yeah, to expand yeah, that's your self-expression in another way. Yeah. And for safety, yeah. because it's a police state, you know, and, uh, and, and, and then that's, that's the thing is I would love to walk around naked swinging my pack <laughs> around sometimes, but you know, I can't because we were hold the fort. I'll be state. right back. So, you guys keep anyway. Going. <laughs> so yeah, man, it's just, uh, the, I just wanted to kind of put the message out there to my friends that like have been involved with a police encounter or might possibly be involved with one is that, you remain can never calm. on the side of the road. Remain calm. Remain in a love uh, uh, consciousness and a forgiveness yes, because consciousness. Their, their vibe is to chip you down to lower your vibe so you get reactionary. Yes. And as soon as you react, then they, then, then they think they're justified to mm -hmm. beat the shit out of you with their sticks. And There's that word shoot again. You. <laughs> and they're, yeah. and they're never going to, they're never going to, um, they're never going to have repercussions for it because right. It, 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 that, you know, in the checks and balances system, you were, uh, you were a combatant and they were an officer of the peace and law and you reacted in a way that made them fear for their safety and your safety is not relevant at all no. in, in, as it relates to their safety. Yes. We, they, they, you know, uh, it doesn't matter if we die, they're more important than we are in this current structure that we, that we have set up. And that's something else that we need to change. Everybody needs to realize that, that you can't win on the side of the road. Right. You can win in court. Maybe, but I want to share this too. I learned this this summer. I got pulled over. So I'm conflating stories. So the original story was I got pulled over in Damascus, Arkansas. I had um, a felony amount of uh, ecstasy on me that I had picked up at Camp Zoe. And it was, uh, it was a crazy situation. It was 12 years ago. Um, and it was, uh, it was a, a thing where I ended up, th th I didn't consent to the search. They, uh, they searched me anyway without probable cause. I hired a good attorney after I spent the night in jail. I got the charges dropped because it was uh, it was an illegal search. So any uh, any fruit from that search is inadmissible in court because they didn't have the probable cause. Now they got the dogs out that night, and in 2007, the the, the law said that uh, the dogs do not constitute a hit from a dog does not constitute probable cause. That was not set up yet. 
So the fact that the dog hit and they went in without my consent, I was able to get the charges dropped after $10,000 of legal fees and they stole my car and never gave it back. Even though I got the charges dropped, they were null pros charges, they call it, which is nolly per sequi, which, which means that they would choose not to prosecute. And they dropped the charges with prejudice against the state because my lawyer was a badass and he got the, the cop to, uh, to, uh, under oath in court, lie about the uh, probable cause. And he mocked him in court. It was amazing. I was so fearful. I spent a year and like it caused PTSD. I had nightmares about it for years. Um, but they filed that as a meth charge because they, they thought on the side of the road that it was meth. So even though I got the charges dropped, even though I paid and jumped through all the hoops, even though I let the fucking police state steal my car and never fought it because my lawyer told me it was in my best interest to let that go because they, the cops were so pissed and so dirty down there at the time, which, by the way, Damascus Police Department lost their license to practice or to, to enforce the law years later because they were such a notoriously evil police state down there that they – uh, there's no police officer down there anymore. They lost it. Which because happened it was, it was still. A, yeah, of course. Yeah. And so they, they were doing are... what they call a kangaroo, a kangaroo court where they were saying like, and this is what happened to me in Hardy, Arkansas the night too. It's like, we're not going to put any driving points on your record. You just pay us this cash and, you know, we'll just kind of wink and nod and let it go by. They're just stealing that money. They're stealing that money. You know what I mean? It's they're, they're just running. They have runoffs of tickets. They're not real tickets. I, I wish I had the ticket to show you right now because it's a money hustle. And I'm going to take this one to court as well because uh, I, the dude on the side of the road in Hardy, 12 years after the Damascus incident, when I got pulled over the other night in Hardy on the way home from Mississippi, he said, um, you know, he's asking me about <coughs> meth and stuff. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I was fighting. I was fighting against him with love and awareness and acceptance and calm, even though he threatened to shoot my dogs. And he uh, and he said that he was asking me about meth. And then he said that he saw these charges on my record from 12 years ago, dropped charges on my police record from 12 years ago that come up on the background search, which, according to what I've researched, as far as the way our legal system is supposed to work, those should those have been gone long to come up. They're not supposed to be there. Right. And so he fucked up because I was I was like treating him friendly. He was trying to be cool with me because, you know, I like I, I accepted him, even though he was coming with aggression towards me and it made him loving towards me. And he I don't think he was supposed to tell me that, but he did. And so now I know that I have 12 year old drop charges that are still on my record and it's causing me to be swarmed by the police. So I wanted to share as well that um I, I, the guy intimate, the cop on the side of the road that night, he, in, in, he, he insinuated that I had cooperated with the police and that's how I got my charges taken care of, which is essentially, he was calling me a fucking snitch, which I don't know about you guys, but I would rather die a horrible, tragic death in front of my mother than to be a snitch. You know what I mean? About yeah. something like that. I would never put, I would never put my troubles on another man. I know a person that did that and his entire life was destroyed by it. And it was, it was justified because he fucked his friends over to get out of his own trouble that's that's a dishonorable thing to do and it infuriated me that this motherfucker was on the side of the road at one in the morning keeping me from my from my steady progress home after thanksgiving for no goddamn reason and he's telling me that i was a snitch so anyway i kept my kept <laughs> that's my cool. a serious test you've but been anyway given. that was the that, that, like that was the test. second dude I, that dude so that was the second time this year that i have been pulled over and illegally searched the first time was on the way to electric forest festival with uh, my friend china my girlfriend and my uh, my rv and it was in Illinois. And some you might remember, Chance, I made a post about it that got shared like 800 times. I tagged the cop in it, and I, I found a picture of the cop. I tagged the cop's personal Facebook page in it and basically told the story. And But what I learned from that situation with him, I didn't know at the time that I had my 12-year-old charges on there, but he was also asking me about those kinds of drugs and stuff. And, uh, and he violated me. He put me and China in the back of the cop car, detained us with no probable cause, while he ran the dog around the car, right? So this is the scary thing. This is what I really want to make sure everybody understands because I just learned this. I want to share this education with the people that I love and the community that I love is that since 2007, the first time that I got in the, in the clutches of the, uh, of the pig police state for this consciousness expansion that I enjoy. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the rules have changed. So the rules of engagement in 2007 was the, the drug dogs, they're, uh, if they don't, they, they can't make probable cause with a drug dog in 2007. Since then, the Supreme Court of the United States has made a decision called Florida versus Harris that ruled that a drug dog hit does justify probable cause. So now these motherfuckers know that. And this this canine cop triggered his dog on my RV. I saw it. He then 
So then he manufactured probable cause. So now they can manufacture probable cause on you with their trained dog. And, with you know, signals and are, words like you easy. were talking exactly. about. Dogs are so easy to train, dude. You know, you can, I, my dog knows sign language. My cousin's dog knows <laughs> Elvish. You know what I'm saying? Like you can fucking mm-hmm. train a dog. No, seriously. Yeah. Whole, so dogs I'll give her her dog to speak Elvish. Dude, yeah, I've got an Australian Shepherd and he knows like 300 words. He can speak about 50 dog words and I know what he's saying. Yeah, the irony you know, is so that anyway, these, uh, um, these pig, learned, <laughs> these uh, order followers, you would call them, right? Order followers that don't use their conscience to decide whether what orders they're following are right and wrong. You know, there's, I'm sure law enforcement that are they're, that are in it to protect, but there's also people that just follow orders. And how is that different than they're the dogs? Oh yeah, listen way. to this. I mean, they're listen literally this. trained you're dogs. Just, yeah, this, they're, they're the they're the they're the they're the pigs. They're the pigs is what they are. And uh, so the uh, the, I really just love that word because it has a lot of historical connotation going back to uh, Fred Hampton and, uh, and so, and, and even before that, but it's a, it's a, it's an infuriating word, but it is a trigger word. I probably shouldn't use it because it it causes division, but uh, (laughs) I'm kind of pissed off right now. And I, uh, and I'm, I'm having fun. So anyway, you know, um, go ahead, Bradley. Sorry, (laughs) but you know, going back to, you were bringing up what happened in Fayetteville, Four days before that, I had a vision about a ring of fire happening in Fayetteville. And I put it out there as a warning. And I was like, Mm. you guys, something is going on. These these poor cops, man. I'm in Fayetteville right now. And for the past two or three days, I've seen they're so fearful now. And the the Fayetteville police, I've always thought, were some of the best I've ever seen. And now they're so scared. But I think is what's happening is – this ring of fire that I've been seeing is lighting up the child trafficking that has been going in and out of our state through the casinos, you know, in Western Siloam Springs, through Tulsa, through, through Fayetteville. You know, you said human trafficking. Yeah, through Springfield. It's going to be a huge ring of fire that is waking up people to see what's actually going on. Because my concern was, how did the feds figure out about this? within hours of it happen i mean like instantaneously almost like they were like they were there like why were they there <laughs> you what know what i mean normally they, what, what what is it specifically yeah like i mean like it was just it was so quick what was the situation? And normally like the way that works it was you talking think, about the, the way they found the cop killer oh, okay is that mm-hmm. the, what you're referring to well he he was killed but I mean, yeah, like normally they, they, they killed him. They killed him right there after it. it happened. Yeah, but like, why yeah. did why they did execute? They, they executed the, the executioner. And, and did you see how they when they were uh, there were so many people in the Fayetteville community that were on the uh, on the scanners, and you know it was it, it caused a trigger in the in the herd. You know the, uh, the the flock got triggered because they heard on the scanner, "Turn your body cameras off." Um, and I think it was, you know, it was after it was probably after that the officer had got. I mean, it was definitely after the officer got the shot. But the question is, you know, why? I don't know. It was just a lot of people triggered. But, I, you know, it, but, man, you know, God bless everybody involved. Rest in peace to that officer. I, I hear that, you know, from all accounts, he was one of the best ones. He was on the Dixon mm-hmm. Street beat. And he, I had, you know, a friend of a friend that has businesses down there made a, a post that I shared today about that. He, you know, firsthand account of this man being a good man. And that that's never justified. It's never that is never the right answer to go and do do that, but it works both ways. It's never right for the police to execute. Well, there's also a recent, either. a really you know recent, I mean? and, and I don't uh, remember where it was, but like pretty recently, there was a scandal, a mild scandal, probably should have been more of a scandal of police using. Uh, they were chasing a guy who hijacked a, a UPS truck and was holding the driver hostage, and they uh, used. Oh, they, they chased him into the highway was, and they, they killed, they killed the hostage. They killed an innocent bystander and they killed the two guys. And it was over insured jewelry in a low power. They used UPS human shield. They had a low jack. GPS they used uh, civilian it. vehicles with people in them. Yeah. As they, shields. They, they fired indiscriminately to the civilian population. Yeah, totally. They don't give a shit about us, man. Like we are, they, they're playing cops and robbers, and we are the we're the background uh, non playable characters in their video yeah. game at this point. So it, yeah, that's uh, pretty important stuff to realize that the the situation is escalating, and I think it's important that as hard as it is, because we all have to probably know people in law enforcement that we actually care about that we don't think are are bad people. 
but we can't let that be, we can't let that be what keeps us too scared to speak out against the really crazy shit that's happening. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Because that's what they want to follow orders and don't question, you know, I mean, and, and and they think that that's going to save them. It's actually the complete reversal of the number one natural law. The number one natural law is that you need to listen Mm -hmm. to your conscience. Con- conscience, Think. you know, conscience, Think. consciousness is the same thing. As yeah. soon as you revo- revoke your well, personal responsibility for what you're doing and put it in the hands of an authority, guess what? You actually can't do that. There is no authority besides truth. Uh-huh. There's no authority in any human uh-huh. being. Yeah, no right. Human exactly. Being actually has authority. Exactly. You're giving away your sovereignty. Yeah, and and you know what? I want to be hopeful about this though because I feel like. We have all the tools at our disposal, like Bradley, with this wisdom of this uh, this ancient, you know, energetic uh, uh, pathways and, and magic and hoodoo, and us with this techno- technological um, uh, prowess and with the psychedelic uh, white uh, white light sorcery stuff that even the scientific world is coming to find out now that we can, you know, it Timothy works. Leary was ahead this time. It works. It work, and we can use this MK Hunter shit for positive, just like they can mm-hmm. use it for negative. You know what I mean? It's we can tool. wake up. We can wake up these guys that are asleep in this dream, in this deep dream state where they're it following orders. Like my, I've got, I've got people that I love close to me and my family that are that are going down that pathway. And like, there's ways to. I mean, I, I feel fully convinced that you know that's part of what our duty should be here is to awaken, not just preach to the choir, but to awaken the asleep. And to come with love to those who are deeply in the dream and help wake them up, give them that blue pill. Red pill, you know? baby. And, and, uh, you know, and, 2020 and is all about suicidal. that. The red pill, the red pill, yeah. Right. 2020 is all about that. 2020 is perfect vision. Some people that yeah, have been man. on the on teetering on waking up are going to be shoved into wakefulness, regardless you know, by what is happening. Hey, yeah, and also – my thing is, it's just like, it's just like the Panthers were saying back in the day, you know, it's like Martin Luther King was asking, now we're telling you, you know, y'all, yeah. y'all motherfuckers ain't gonna give it to us, we're gonna take it. And I'm talking about consciousness with that, awakening, consciousness, and we can, you know, not, you know, this revolution of the mind, you know, and, and also the revolution in the streets and nonviolent revolution, occupying public spaces, occupying these, these, uh, these, these migrant camps and overwhelming them with love and nonviolent occupation and coverage got and do. coverage uh, got to do. grassroots coverage, <laughs> coverage. That's absolutely re- we'll and talk about what you support. find there man i'd love to do another cast with you where we talk about this sure to be an adventure that you're going on I'll call, call, yeah, call me while there. you're down there for sure and uh okay Speaking go ahead Brad. Of, sorry uh but i was just going to give you one last parting thing you know talking about ancient things um uh, we've all had people getting into their DNA and their ancestry and, you know, like the government might've been using that to track us, et cetera, et cetera. That's, that's fine. I'm not going to talk about that. But what I want to talk about is more and more people know where their ancestors come from. And the moment you have that mm-hmm. line of power to your ancestors, Jamie, this is going to be important for you. Whenever you're going and traveling to keep you invisible Ask that your ancestors walk before you, behind you, and oh. beside you, and you I will never that. be alone. Every I single one that. of them. Every single I one of them. That. I mean, think, of, think of the last avatar, the airbender. Think of that line of the avatars behind him. You have that same line of unbroken since the beginning of when humanity got here of people that are sending power through you you are their hopes and dreams and wishes for dude i'm so and when we're talking about magic too dude i've been learning um, how to play systems are more accessible if they're part of your lineage so you know for Mm -hmm. us regular white people the western occult tradition is pretty good but then going back into like celtic and uh, druidic magic. That's where you right. start to tap into oh, the super, yeah. which is hilarious because none of us are pure. Yeah, white. Yeah, a lot of us have native ancestry too. <laughs> right, for example. right. Native, yeah, native yeah, American ancestry is in there, Irish. and they don't even tell you about your native right. ancestry on those kits. It's just like that doesn't exist. But I know for like, I I had one of those yes. kits done a long time ago, and it gave me nothing of that. And I know for a fact that I've got a good chunk of it from family history. Cool. So that's that's another thing to keep in mind about the ancestry thing is that there's more to it than maybe it isn't revealed in the kit, including lineage, 
uh, bloodlines that are super occulted, like what you would call elves or fairies that were a real type of humanity mm -hmm. that were... Yes, yeah. unknown. I got unknown on mine from Ancestry DNA. Unknown, 2%. Yeah, it... Oh, interesting. I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> so I, I, want, I want to... Yeah, right. Yeah, that, I like that alien <laughs> DNA in there, man. <laughs> yeah, I want to cool. talk about... I just want to touch base on what you said, Bradley. Yeah, right. Um, what you just said about the ancestors gave me chills because it's like um, I, I've been, you know, my mom, my mom is uh, when I was growing up, my mom was a was a devout Christian. My dad was a devout atheist. And so um, <laughs> long story short, my mom was raised Catholic and I've heard my whole life about uh, although I, I was not raised Catholic. I never went to that church until I was an adult, just at, like at Christmas with her because she didn't okay. practice that. She went to the Methodist church when I was a kid anyway irrelevant but the thing is that they you know in that in that tradition one of the things that i do uh, respect and admire from the catholic tradition is that they they ad address the ancestors and they address the saints and they they call and try to manifest the, the the spirits of those that have come before to protect and guide and i feel like that is very real and very true and and it, it it's like chance's hat by god it might not be real, but it definitely can't hurt. And the fact that you believe it actually gives it power as well. Hat. You know what I'm saying? And so check this. I want to show you. Well, and and if you're going in so, there uh, as an advocate and revolutionary, you can call on that line of ancestry too. It's not just blood. It's also oh, people yeah, that dude. are working for also, your who else covered yeah. their head with silver or gold Practicing would be like cost, kings maybe. and queens. It's a sovereignty symbol too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Anointed, it does block yes. EMF. It yeah, could even yeah, block. Totally. And, and, and uh, saints, saints, you know, the, uh, the, the, the holy, Oh yeah, I was gonna say uh, that you could even block um, uh -oh. consciousness influencing things like spiritual things potentially with uh, something that's also shielding you from EMF. We don't really know how that works exactly, but I have one more request to put out there to guys and girls listening right now or watching that if you want to call in and say hi to us to let me know in the chat or let me know in a message because we can bring you on before we wrap up in a little while. And um, we were talking a little bit about coming into 2020, and I wanted to make another point about that as well. That uh, Jamie, are you familiar with the Schumann resonance as a concept? Okay. Yeah, yeah I've been I've been checking that out recently. It's it's going off the charts this past like this year. Like so the Schumann Whoa. resonance is the yeah. background frequency of yeah. planet Earth, and I believe the for the most of the time that's been measured, it's stayed at about 4.87 hertz, something like that, or 6.7. And just Saturday, just this Saturday, it spiked up to 158 hertz. Crazy spike. Dude, and that was the day, that was the day that I learned how to suddenly play, like, I, my, my, I, I decided to start learning how to play the blues to kind of channel some ancestral magic from my Mississippi homeland. And because I've always had a, had a goal to do that, and that day, I played for like seven hours straight with these vibrations and was like, all of a sudden, this is making perfect sense. Like, it's never mm -hmm. had, I've never done it before. And it was just like, boom, dude. And that's when the depression ended. And I had this kind of Whoa. like couple of re like revelations all of a sudden. And it was just like, what the fuck, dude? Yeah, it's, it was very weird and very Bradley, weird. you're from Mississippi, um, right? Dude, yeah. Or, yeah, or from in that Me? area? No. I'm from Gentry, Arkansas. But you stayed home in of the Mississippi Bay. for a while, right? I yeah, I lived in Mississippi. I just bring for that up because you month. guys are like kindred, um, kindred spirits. Christmas. You might not have even known each other yet. Now you know each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I love you already, dude. I uh, this this is a great conversation and that man, the Mississippi hoodoo magic and energy and stuff. There's so much unhealed trauma down there and so but so much power and magic and mystery and like it was the heart, the dark heart of the of the old ways, and there's so much unresolved well, it stuff. Was, like when I was down there this time, you know, a lot of that hoodoo culture. When I was came down there, I just kind of realized that they're, they're, I think they're, we have a little delay that's screwing you guys up. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah there's yeah, a delay. We're talking now, the hoodoo. The hoodoo now, I, uh, I, you know, the Lucky Mojo uh, website I got into about 15 years ago uh, when I really got in, delving into it. took me moving away from Mississippi for the first time at like age 20 before I really got obsessed with the blues culture. And, uh, you know, like I was referring to earlier, like a lot of those old blues guys talk about hoodoo, 
magic just casually in their uh, in their uh, lyrics. But um, but man, there's some, I, I'm really inspired to like reconnect with my ancestry down there and do some work down there because mm -hmm. it needs it so bad. And there's so much struggle and suffering going on down there in the black community and the white community and so much separateness. I went to an all white segregation academy for 13 years. It was a private wow. academy that was founded the year that integration hit the public schools. And I've learned so much shit. I just learned three days ago from my friend Dobelly Stray that in my hometown, Macon, Mississippi, there was a mass race riot in 1919 with multiple deaths and tortures and all this stuff. Never heard this story before. It happened in my hometown with probably some of you know my ancestors or my friend's ancestors directly involved. And it's just, they didn't tell us. I learned what indoctrination is firsthand from being indoctrinated as a child and then getting out of that filter bubble and realizing that like everything I was told was a lie. And they uh -huh. didn't, they, ever, the only thing I ever heard about Martin Luther King was that he was a troublemaker, wow. you know? And uh, like they stopped, they stopped teaching us Mississippi history books. Only went up to 1950, and uh, wow. you know, <laughs> yeah. And so it was such an eye-opening experience. But I feel like it like trained me and prepared me for like this. They, they were really good at, at indoctrination and mind control down there, you know. And and they did, you know, the, making the other, you know, having the inward be the other, you know. And you can put all your bad energy and all of your blame onto the onto that other that's over there that looks different than you yeah but if you keep that's... keeping shit onto people eventually they are going to prosper that is fertilizer <laughs> yeah <laughs> dude totally like, no, check it, come check on. It. that's what i was telling me and china, dude me and china were talking about last night i was i was showing her this blind willie johnson blues song called i just can't keep from crying sometime with him and uh he was a uh he was a brilliant slide guitar player, you know, self-taught like they all were. They, none of them could read music. None of them could read English, probably. And they, they but, you know, their stuff, the, the master that they worked for, I can tell you this firsthand, like Blind Willie Johnson and that whole generation of, you know, those Muddy Waters, those blues legends. By the way, I'm like, I think it was Muddy Waters that was working as a janitor for Chess Records when Mick Jagger and Stones came over. Uh, they had been listening to, to Muddy's music. It's like, the fuck have you got this guy cleaning the floors for he's a genius yeah. mate you know it's like what do you, right. you know it's like that was the world that we you know but so all that stuff is going to live forever and those guys in those plantations that they worked for are all rotting and covered in kudzu you know what i mean like that the, the, it goes back to what i was saying earlier about the creation and love the language of love and the language of creation outlasts the language of oppression and the language right. of torture and the language of pain and, and the language of fear every time Ozzy Mandias died that. and that that statue is still there that art is still there. yeah we do and you know that love uh yeah moves people yeah. Which, si which side of that which side of that coin do you want to be on you know and to realize that strong men create good times good times create weak men and, and weak the, men create bad times bad times it. create strong men <laughs> it's a and that it's strong cycle. men also cry, Mr. Lebowski. Strong <laughs> men also cry. That's actually a quote. <laughs> Jamie, do you have any new photos you want to maybe show us out so, with that screen share that we figured out? Any any co <laughs> any cool stuff man, you've finished I think, lately? I, I man, really, I I've been kind of like on this different thing. I, I you know I did I, you know nothing that I feel like would be interesting, honestly, to the masses, except that I do want to give a shout out to. Um, I'll show you a couple. Uh, my uh, just because I want I'm wanting to bring healing into my world and my uh, and shine love and light onto people that uh, I feel like deserve it and honor and celebrate them. So hang on one second. I just want to give a little shout out to uh, uh, see the video setting. What can I do here? Oh, share. Oops, oops, share. I already did this once and I've forgotten. There it is. Share. Uh, then I go to my uh, finder and then share. So. Uh, this is my little, uh, my little I, I, went, I went on a mission when I was in this city this time to shine my lens with love on the people that I love and care about, you know, and, uh, and, so, and to shake off some, uh, some ancestral uh, pain and some, and some pain of my childhood. And like, th this is my little, can you shrink uh, that down? Uh, it's not, I think your screen brother. resolution is higher than the oh, window. So we're at a 1920 by 1080. So if you have like a 4k that, monitor, it'll look, so put it a little more in the middle. A little to the left. Tell me when. I can't see it. A little more to the left. We almost got it. Um, about about there. Keep it up. Maybe yeah, we've just about it. got it. It's pretty much well, fully in frame now. Cool. If you go, if you keep the window about that size, we'll be oh, looking anyway. good. 
Okay. So anyway, this is just this is my dad and my uh, my little niece and nephew, uh, uh, Caroline and Thornton at Thanksgiving after Thanksgiving. It's actually, on my dad's birthday, and uh, I just like I went down to the mission of like I just want to like reconnect with my family because I feel like I've gotten just you know disconnected from them through my own. It's like what you're talking about with that thing with Marcus of like letting things go unsaid and letting relationships be you know uh, damaged. I got to be with my dad. He wrote a children's book. He's actually gotten in, in his retirement. He, he worked for the post office for his whole life and was miserable. And now that he's retired, he's creating and writing children's books. And they're really beautiful. And I got to be at the library with uh, with him for his birthday while I was down there. And just want to give some love and respect to my dad for doing, you know, stepping out and in, in in creating. Um, and also uh, my friend Taff, my best friend from childhood, just had his first, just had his first child. Uh, and I'm gonna shrink that down too. His name's Towns Baker. This is uh, this is the day. This is that feeling when you meet a when you meet a friend for life right here. This is uh, this is my my best friend for my whole life's first Those little boy. Oh, uh, so eyes. I know, dude. I know. It was it was. It makes me cry just to look at this. But uh, you know, I just like I I decided like I had been doing too much profiteering with my photography, and that I need to do more for meaning and for love. And like, you know, I, I feel like my, 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 my art is fueled by love and creativity is fueled by love. And that, you know, the, the, I just wanted to get back into the realm of, you know, doing it for love because, and I teach my photography students that too. It's like, I learned a lesson early on that if you do as an artist, it's easy to, to, you know, get into the money trap of I'm, I'm creating for money instead of I'm creating for love and creating for passion, you know? And so these were just gifts that I gave to my family and, uh, you know, I wanted to go down there and shine the light of love with my lens. And it was the most fun I've had with photography in quite a while. Um, and I just really just want to celebrate, you know, and thank my friend Taft for being such an awesome friend to me in like really hard times in my childhood and like just being a, a just a constant source of love and approval and acceptance, you know, um, and uh, there's another source of love and approval and acceptance right there. What's up? Michael. Oh, yeah, we got Michael. Michael in the house. All right. <laughs> Aloha. Yeah, man. Michael Murphy, laughter, yogi, extraordinaire, you. extraordinary dancer as well. All Amazing right. This guy. is a great four way sausage fest. I can't oh. believe it. Quite <laughs> <laughs> good. Uh, <laughs> the divine masculine. You know, these are the people house. that I became. Uh close friends with because of doing my show so doing it out of love is creating love for me just to touch on what you were saying there and i think we get a little sidetracked in our quest to turn our art into what keeps us sovereign and sustains us and generates income and it can be stressful and take away the original excitement of it and i love that you just shared that lesson with us jamie and those amazing pictures you you really do paint with light as the word photography means etymologically which i hear you say all the time super cool <laughs> thank you man painting with love really you know love that's and kind light. of the new thing for me is it's like this channel and love too. yeah I love you. yeah that's right that's right it's not just a hippie email signature so what's guys. up michael hi <laughs> per- really well can you hear me great yeah man yeah. Beautiful. Um, so I was listening. I've been tuned in for a while. I'm at work, but I'm in the back room for right now. Um, and I was listening to police stories, and I too have a police story in from Mississippi this year. Um, and I felt it was it kind of. I feel my experience can kind of integrate and really drive home like what I feel is important for everyone to take home from all these conversations. Um, so my story began. I was driving to uh, New Orleans, Louisiana from Northwest Arkansas. And I drive at night. It just takes me forever to get on the road. And it was pretty late at night. Too. Um, I was going to stop at one spot in Arkansas. Actually, I was going to go to the Toltec Mounds. I had had a vision and a meditation that I was supposed to go to the mounds. And I missed the turn, didn't realize until I was already 45 minutes past it, so I kept driving. Um, I was going to stop in Arkansas, didn't find a good spot, kept driving. It was probably it was after 1 a.m. and I was somewhere in southern Mississippi and I saw a sign on the side of the road on these weird back roads that Google Maps was taking me down and it said Mississippi Mounds Trail with an arrow and the road was right there and I missed the road but I was able to flip around and go down and follow that road about 
300 yards down the road was a mound. And in, it was a big 40 foot tall mound. And next to it was a new plantation style house, like a big white house with a bunch of cars in the driveway. And then on the other side of it was a smaller mound. And I stopped on this little pull out on the side of the road. It said, no trespassing. Uh, please enjoy these mounds from the side of the road. And so doing what I do, I enjoyed them for a little while underneath the starlight. And then I went to sleep. And I had two dreams. Uh, the first dream was that, that uh, there was a, a family of ants kind of in a house, like an ant hill that looked kind of like the White House. And they were really scared that there was this like car parked by their ant hill, like it was going to crush them or like hurt them. They were very scared. And so I woke up from that dream and had this like kind of intuitive moment. I, I should leave, but I didn't. I had a full body reaction to the, that intuition that said, no, you need to stay. You need to sleep. And so I went right back to sleep. And then I had a second dream that I was seeing this empty field that I was parked next to. So on one side was the mound in the house. On the other side was an open, completely empty field. The crops had probably just been harvested. And I saw people running through mostly uh, like African-American people, mostly black people running through the field and they were scared and like scattered and like running. And I had this like immediate fear rise in me like, oh, I need to run They're after me. Like they are after me. And then I stopped and I was like, I don't have anything to be afraid of in my dream. I'm not doing anything wrong. Uh, I like listen to the sign and I'm enjoying the balance from the side of the road. I'm fine in my dream. The dream went lucid. And then at that point, there was a helicopter that flew in and was like searching through the field with these blue lights. It was like blue laser lights. And it was like looking for people and they were still terrified and like scrambled and run all over the place. Um, well, then I woke up to blue lights flashing in my windows and uh, there and someone yelling to get out of my vehicle. So I crawl out of the back of my car. Um, thankfully, I was <laughs> wearing clothes <laughs> and like immediately get out of my car. And uh, I uh, have a flashlight and a gun in my face. And there is a cop on the side of the road. And I couldn't really see his face, but he basically told me, like, put my hands up, approach him uh, slowly, like, then turn my back to him and put my hands down. So I did. And as soon as I put my hands down, I felt a handcuff get pressed on my, my, uh, my wrist. And I, like, kind of, like, flinched. Um, I was pretty like unnerved. I wouldn't say I was scared, but I was very confused. I uh, just got woken up to blue flashing lights. I was doing exactly what the sign had said. I wasn't breaking any laws. Um, and he was pressing handcuffs against my wrist. And I'm like, why are you handcuffing me? And he said, this is the best for the both of us. Just go ahead and do it. And I could feel how scared he was. I could feel the terror in his body. And I decided that I was going to just like listen to him. Like you can't fight us like a, scared person um it's not gonna work and so i let him handcuff me and i asked him like why are you handcuffing me and he's like i need to make sure you're alone and make sure and i was like what are you talking about and for me this just didn't even like process but he had his gun out and he went to my vehicle and my door was still open the back door was open and he's looking through the windows and was trying to like he was looking for somebody else in my car and the assumption, like the story that I built was he thought that I was traveling with somebody um, and he wanted to make sure that he wasn't going to get jumped as soon as I like it was interacting with me. Totally valid. I understand like the fear of story. Um, he comes back to me and he's talking and it's cold. This is like October during that cold snap. I was barefoot and not wearing like a lot of clothes and it was cold and <clears throat> talking to me, asking me a bunch of questions, like, what are you doing? Why are you here? And like, you know, you're trespassing. This is a restricted area. I kept saying, this is a restricted area. And I was like, what are you talking about? This is a restricted area. The sign right there on this federal sign says, I can be here. I can be right where I'm at. And uh, I was like very calm and I was very nice and I smiled a lot and I actually like kind of giggled a little bit and he was confused and he just kept saying like, this is a restricted area. And then finally he was he had his phone out too. He had his phone out on speakerphone. Like he didn't even have his radio. I forgot to mention, he's totally plains clothes. He was not in that uniform. He was like in his pajamas and like small town Mississippi cop. And he's on this like phone call with dispatch. And basically he's like, 
okay, it's calm situation. Yeah. And then he, he like looks at me and he's like, well, he seems pretty peaceful. And that made me giggle pretty well. And he's like, he sees me and then I'm like, okay, cool. Like I'm totally fine. Like he knows who I am. And uh, <laughs> yeah. And so he, um, he's like looking at me and then he starts like saying like, I'm breaking the law and like trying to like put things that aren't true out. And I'm just like, no, it's not like I did this. And I asked him like, is there one, could you do me one favor now that you know that there's nobody there and you know, I'm not violent, um, that I'm calm. Could you take these handcuffs off of me? And he's like, yeah, I can do that for you. And then he realizes that he didn't have the handcuff keys. Um, he oh, just, this is crazy. Yeah. Right. So I'm in handcuffs on the side of the road barefoot and he doesn't have the keys to let me out. So like, this is like the point where people probably start freaking out, but I just kind of laughed off. Like literally started laughing about it. Um, it wasn't like a natural laughter. I actually forced it and it felt good. And then I felt totally clear after I allowed that. Um, You're the and laughter Jedi, so, dude. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> right. Yeah. You can put it that way. That's but yeah, a, it's such so a badass like, skill. I'm going to come right back to and i'll get the come back with the key for like how far is that and he's like uh it's about it's about a 10 minute drive there and back or 10 minute drive there and it'll be a 10 minute drive back i'm like i don't have my shoes on i can't get to my shoes can i just come with you and he like agreed and put me in the back of the squad car and what proceeded was the 10 like one of the most pleasant 10 minutes i had that entire weekend of me getting to enjoy a ride <laughs> as sun came up it was like literally right when the sun was coming up i was a little bit uncomfortable like my hands kind of hurt because i was like sitting in the squad car but uh yeah i got to enjoy the sunrise across mississippi plains and he's a really nice guy and i got to the, the cop like the police station and he like let me out and pointed out like there are cameras everywhere like here like you're on camera don't go anywhere his wife came out who is the dispatcher and she was like kind of watching why would you go anywhere Exactly, right? <laughs> but I disagree on the nice uh, well, kind of trained. Thing. Yeah, they're trained <laughs> to be scared of everybody they encounter. So it's yeah. it's, it's their loss. So, yeah, so I actually have to go here in a second, but I'm going to go ahead and finish the story. There is a really cool part that it ended with, but I may not get to it. Um, but anyway, so uh, yeah, uh, his wife comes out, the dispatcher. She like watched it over me. She can tell I'm like a little upset, like not showing it, but she had this more like empathic nature to her and she's like you're totally fine nothing's gonna happen you're you're okay like you're a good person and i was like yeah thank you <laughs> like yeah she could see like feel like the calmness and it was fine and then he came back out unlocked me like got the handcuffs off put me back in the squad car and drove me back to my car and yeah the whole situation could have gone really really south really quickly you right took pictures with him at the end right yeah it so before yeah. i got out uh, before i like i got back in my car and left um he uh i was talking to him and i asked him like hey would you mind taking a selfie with me he's like can i ask you a favor and he's like yeah would you take a selfie with me he started like he almost laughed he almost did and then he didn't let it out and so i like took this the selfie with him and i was like okay there's one other thing i teach laughter yoga will you laugh with me? and then he started laughing that was immediate he just like had it wanting to come up he immediately laughed let that whole super silly situation go and I could see in that moment, he started processing like, wow, I, I kind of screwed this up. And at the same time, he was able to let that go. Um, yeah. And so like laughter is powerful, but really like I'm grateful for that experience. I'm really grateful that one, I was aware of the, uh, like the potentials, like he had his gun like pointed at me. Like he, if I wasn't fully aware of what was going on, it could have gone really bad. Um, and if I would have like if pressed, not doing anything wrong. Calm. Yeah, you're too far for the Excuse mic, me? Jamie. Sorry, if you want, if you want a Jedi of calmness, I'm sorry. If, <laughs> if, like, say you, you like the, the like the extreme amounts of calm you were able to maintain. At any point, you could have become the bad guy by just by just reacting with natural anger. Yeah, you know? and it, it radiated out. And so, in any of those kind of police situations, like the most important thing is just to be fully aware of the situation and know that you're not doing anything wrong in it. Um, yeah. And so, and if you know that you're not doing anything wrong, then there's nothing that they can do to you. Like they can try to take away your rights. They can do nothing all kinds will of things. stick they can pin things on you, but you don't, yeah, if you don't react to it, then that stops it before it even happens. Um, and I've since yeah. that, since that moment really integrated a lot of what happened, um, in that part of Mississippi, I was the minority long haired white guy. Like they were like, I fit the profile of somebody who was going to murder them. 
that was like the most violent minority in that area is you were like Charlie I Manson like. to that guy and so, <laughs> yeah, call exactly. back to the yeah, Manson every, and also across the street from a very nice house with a lot of nice cars they thought that that house called the police thinking that I was staking at the house I was getting ready to rob them and they also believed that there was probably more than just one of me because I was staying with the car like the whole story fits but I don't live in that reality I live in the silliest reality. so like it just didn't click for me and in that process it also I feel was very healing for the officer too because he realized like oh not every single person like I don't have to go to Hopefully. that extreme is I don't I, I don't think we really live in that world anymore like sure those things happen and like there's violence all over the place but if you ha take your own power and are in control of your own awareness you can change others reality you can change yeah the strongest the energy pattern in and the situation like, is what absolutely. entrains the other ones so like the those like order follower exactly. programmed agent smiths if you will they are going to resonate at your level if you're at a higher vibratory level it's just like a guarantee mm -hmm. and yeah and then the funny part the, at least for me was i was sitting in the car afterwards on my phone and i was immediately writing up this story i was like oh i want to share this this is like amazing and he like taps on my window after like two minutes like you need to leave or they're going to call me again he like points over at the house. i think it's wild about it too is the <laughs> fact that you were by the mountains and you had such powerful dreams symbolic of kind of what was going on too uh, yeah, there's a big oh, ancestral, wow. go ahead. I'm supposed to go back to work. I'm supposed to go back okay. to work, but I want to tell this story. So I drove to the next mount. So I drove down to the next mount after he made me leave. And there was a really like crazy, like visionary experience I had right after that, where I went to the mount, I parked at this other mount and I wanted to go and leave an offering to it. I felt like I, like the whole reason I was there. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. So um, I don't actually. <laughs> Sweet. Um, yeah. So the whole reason I was in this situation was I felt like I was supposed to leave an offering to the mount. Like it was this whole like our society happening, unfolding at the base of this spiritual center. And I saw it like in a macrocosmic way where like I could leave it there or I could actually go in. Like there was a reason I had that vision to go to a mound and like sleep at a mount. It was the vision was to sleep at a mount. And when I did it, I like woke up in handcuffs. So I went to the next mound. And there was like the name of that mound also tied into this like crazy story that was going on at the time. But I went to that next mound and I was a little bit fearful of getting arrested because this one also had all the same no trespassing signs, but I wanted to leave an offering. So what I did was I like really quickly like ran across this like grass field to the edge of the mound and I threw a little tiny crystal. Like I collected crystals at the little rock, at a little rock uh, crystal patch and um, crystal offerings at quartz crystals are in that tradition of the mounds were found in the mounds mm -hmm. as like the off that is like within the, like the scope of that culture. Mm -hmm. And I like threw the crystal, it hit a tree branch and fell right at the base of the mound, but didn't land on the mound. And I was like, ah! and I like ran all the way up to the edge of the mound, like knowing that somebody in this neighborhood. So this second mound was in the middle of a neighborhood. And I like run over, grab the crystal, throw it up the hill, turn around and start running back. And I heard the crystal hit the mound. And when it did, there was this beam of light that like it turned into a beam of light that shot straight up and then like Nova out. And when that light hit me, it hit me from like the back of my chest. And I like had this feeling of like darkness. So like where the light was spreading out from the mound, there was this darkness that was even bigger that was like compressing around specifically around my heart. It wanted to like completely encapsulate my heart. And I like, I started to like physically like hunch over and fall. Like I almost fell while I was like running and it was like this like full convulsion. And I also like realized in that moment that I was physically reacting when I realized that I was physically reacting to something that I was not cognitively afraid of. It stopped that light was came through, washed out the darkness and it like shot this like huge beam of light up on the mound. Like it activated the mound um, in that one moment. And also it shot another beam of light out, like a Nova of white light out around that whole neighborhood, that whole area. And I got this like kind of download in that moment that um, this area is so oppressed and so like poor and like everything has been taken from them. Everything has been stripped from them, the people and on either side of the argument that police officers just as affected by 
all of the things that have been taken, their land being cut down. Um, like in the, the car ride, I was like, mentioning, like talking to him, like, oh, this is such a beautiful place. And he's like, yeah, but they cut down all the trees. It used to be pretty. It used to be this. He couldn't even see the beauty that I was seeing. Like we were on completely different wavelengths. And um, in that moment, it like became so clear that everything had been taken from those people. they had been pitted against each other arbitrarily. And that the only way to heal it was gratitude. Um, my one act of offering, giving a tiny little crystal to the mound was the first act of gratitude that that ancient site where all these ancestral energies had been for like hundreds of years is the first act of gratitude in decades at that particular site. And so where this darkness had just become like the mire, just become the swamp, that one simple act of gratitude reset it for that moment. But even by the time I had left, like minutes later, I could feel the darkness start to like come back in. So it was like, it reset it for a moment, but we need more gratitude. Like there needs to be gratitude constantly. And then as I was driving, like I realized, as I was driving out of this neighborhood, I, I realized like firsthand why there was so much darkness there. It's like, there were houses and I could see like, I saw one house, which was a black family. And then right next to it was Confederate flags in the windows, like ne right next door. And it was a, like a repeating pattern of that, of like, just people that don't there's no community there there's no like all that people can do is hold on to like what little they have left and then you have other people like that big white house who they have so much but they have this narrative of they took it from those people and so they hold on because they're afraid that they're going to get hurt if well, even were being on the mound itself so you have that you, type of vibe because first of all you have like the fake ass ancestry when it comes to this whole pride in something as clearly backwards as the ideals of the Confederacy as the they're presented to us. And the, the mounds were taken from the indigenous people that were living there who didn't even claim to have built the mounds. I've been researching the mound building culture. So it's really interesting that you're bringing this up because I think that there's a ley line connection between these sites that actually grids the whole earth and that there's a lot more juju if you will at these mounds than most people would give it credit for <clears throat> well right didn't you kind of mention um or maybe sorry maybe i'm plucking this out of your head but <laughs> the cherokee people um they 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 built their mounds on top of pre-existing yeah. structures right I mean, like it was already sacred before they got yeah, there. Yeah, and there's evidence that the mound building building culture was a worldwide culture way, way, way back. Right, with the pyramids and everything. Yeah, other linked. megalithic sites are connected to the mm -hmm. same group of people. I think we have one mm -hmm. more Colin who's going to yeah. join us too. I'm going to make sure he's got the link. Five. The, the takeaway, the very clear takeaway is the only way to heal these places, the only way to yeah. clear up dark energies and at least bring some balance. Like I'm not even saying bring it all to the light. They're like we need just balance. And the balance, the only way to do that yeah. is acts of gratitude. So offerings that is being grateful and also being aware. Aware gratitude right. equals awareness. and acceptance. Awareness equals gratitude. Gratitude is not a positive thing. It's not a negative thing. It's a very neutral act of I see this and I accept it and gratitude is the only way that we're going to fix any of these problems in our and life. cultivating that in your own community as well mm -hmm. you know starting a weekly gratitude ritual of giving back to the land saying thank you thank you for what the people are doing for you and thankful for your community is helpful as well yeah buddy that's the mm -hmm. transmutation gratitude is alchemy but that ancient note. knowledge. Thank you for having me. Thank yeah, for thanks for dropping that interesting story <laughs> on you, us, Michael. man. It fits in for me really well because I've been really into this mound stuff. And then I didn't even know we were going to go on this whole like police encounter tangent, but it's been like the theme. So that's pretty cool. Synchronicity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Thanks for leading us, Jamie. This, I mean, we wouldn't even be having this conversation if you hadn't gotten me so fired up the other day. And see you later, Michael. Thanks for jumping on. We got actually an episode with Michael coming Thank out you. in a couple of weeks. He and I had a really good conversation not long awesome. ago, and it's just in the shoot waiting to be produced. And we might have one more person calling oh, to join us, oh, too, okay. if we're lucky. He's a magical, uh, wise old soul, man. That was really good for me to hear that about the gratitude and the practice of 
you know, awareness and gratitude being a, a neutral uh, uh, observation, man, I'm going to take that back home and try to utilize that, you know, mm-hmm. in, my, in my dealings with Mississippi. And gratitude and thankfulness is protection. That's what, yeah. that's what our ancestors tried to teach us, you know, like be thankful for what you have. It wasn't literally be thankful for what you have. It was by being thankful, you are bringing protection into and you're your integrating life. the lesson of whatever the difficult thing is that you're showing gratitude to, because when you're like, right. So you don't have to you don't reject the lesson. The lesson. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and then also gratitude. You can express the lesson. You can express the lesson in gratitude and give the other yeah. person the lesson in yeah. a way that's not critical. <laughs> I mean, like, right. Thank you for teaching me this with your mistreatment of me. Yeah. <laughs> right. But, you know, that's kind of like throwing hot kindness to your enemies is like throwing hot coals in their face. I mean, that's yeah, putting that's ashes the whole in thing. their mouth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. Yeah, love is the totally. weapon, gentlemen. Mm-hmm. That's it. Hey, and so is gratitude. creativity. Cre- because I feel yeah, like our creativity is a weapon. America has become so cynical that we have to combat it with positivity and optimism and gratitude and love because. Everybody's, you know, like, like Michael said, they're so worried that if equality for everyone means that it's going to be taken from them. And I'm like, that's not how equality works. (laughs) Amen. You know what? I just, I want to put this out to the hive mind of the internet because one of my favorite creators is Conan O'Brien and Conan O'Brien had what could easily be described as one of the most heartbreaking experiences that's ever happened to an entertainer is that he, he achieved a lifetime goal of becoming the tonight show host, which, and then having it immediately taken away from him. And he, his final episode of the tonight show, he it's, I've never seen it since it was aired live on NBC and then they just scrubbed it from existence. But he went on an epic speech about cynicism and he was very anti cynicism. You know, he's like, it, it, he, he went into, uh Oh, here comes Jonathan. That's dope. Uh, but I want somebody, if somebody could help find that video, I think that it would be so healing. I know that on BitTorn or something, it's got to be out there. Some of the final episode of Conan O'Brien's Tonight Show. One more heady on white guy joins the, co- the call. Here we go. Demographically, yeah. not diverse, this is, this... but intellectually quite <laughs> diverse. And creatively. I mean, Jonathan, this is something perfect to highlight 2019 stuff since we kind of started off on that t- uh, being our topic. One thing that happened in 2019 is Deep Sequence blew the fuck up. Deep Sequence blew the fuck up. They're playing tomorrow night at George's, by the way. Check out Deep Everybody Sequence. That's Jonathan's down. band. Ooh. He is an incredible guitar player. That is just like a, a jam sandwich with the, a side of Brady Cagle and also the rest of the band. Super good. But hey, man, can can you uh, say hi to us? We'll make sure we can hear you. He might not be able to hear us yet. Oh yeah, there Yo, you are, dude. Yo, what's up, everybody? There you are. How's it going? What's up, bro? What's up? What's up? Yes. What y'all been doing? It's talking shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I asked you that, but I've been hanging out, listening to you guys do it this whole time. So uh, I was well you aware. To us? Yeah. You miss us? What's what? up, yo? I just, I just moved into a new place. It was convenient. I just been listening to you guys while I Look set at my this room lounge up. In. <laughs> guy right here never had a never had hey that's what i've been doing the whole time (laughs) you got a cop story for us or what what's uh, on your mind jonathan (laughs) (laughs) cool cool (laughs) you got any questions for me yeah how are you so cool (laughs) uh uh, how did Marley make that tapestry and how can I get one? Dude, check it out. Look at this. This is a, a Mar- oh, that's Marley Mar- original. <laughs> yep, that's one of hers. Um, and uh, you can go to her Etsy at Mars Bazaar, M A R S B A Z A A R, or you could uh, holler at her on Facebook or whatever. She's got, she makes loads of them and they're all this fire. That's what's up. Hell yeah, man. I love her work. I feel like we might should give a few shout outs to like all the artists that are set, like have uh, work for like albums or uh, pieces for sale that people could gift for Christmas gifts. Okay. Yeah. 
you know well, yeah like that's shop a, local. Few shout outs on that note yeah like, man okay if you're looking for some heady wire wraps check out charles fultz designs there's a good one and also jazz wraps i've got my jazz wrap on right now uh those are a couple of shout outs i give out to the rap nice. community also we got brandon arnold in the house with us right now on the comments and there's somebody you need to go to third eye jewelry.com or is it oh. dot net get, oh yeah get that Brandon, get off your ass and call in, bro. What's up? Why are you gonna be? How are you gonna be typing? That's so. That's so last generation. That's some boomer <laughs> shit, bro. I need some video. Bro. I'm gonna post Whoa. some links in the comments. No ageism. I don't know. I just I meant that spiritual, <laughs> spiritual boomerism. <laughs> oh, this is so fun. I'm glad this got so blown up into a bigger conversation. Oh yeah, this is such a dope party. I want to give a shout out to China Cap from uh, this. Uh, this it's not finished yet, but this uh, this mandala design oh, behind yeah. me is a, this is actually my. It's, it's a, beautiful. It's a drop. I've been it's staring on, at the moons, dude. It's a drop down. She made it for me, and it's a drop down. Uh, it's a it's a blind for my camper. Like it rolls up, and it's gonna be like my camper blind. <laughs> uh, yeah, and they're doing all your weird experiments. Right. Yeah, right. Yo, excuse me, I'm take a picture. Yeah, we've been in this for a minute. I'm about to have to do my second bathroom break if we keep going too much longer. But I'm having fun. I think Brandon Arnold's going to call in. He might. What do you have on your mind that uh, is important from 2019, Jonathan? I want a little more from you. Oh, man. You know, I've just been working super hard with the band um, and been. Uh, I'm working on a duo project. Hey, uh, come check out Deep Sequence's last three shows of the year uh, tomorrow uh, at George's uh, Thursday in Springfield. Yeah. I'll see you there, right, Absolutely. Chance? Hell yeah, dude. Um, and uh, and then on Saturday, we're Sweet. in Conway. Well, I want to know like what, what lessons has it taught you to experience the type of success and thrilling ride of being in Deep Sequence this year? Like, Do you have any... Do you have any uh, wisdom you've distilled from that? Man, just like roll with it, you know, like a lot of this stuff is like kind of nebulous at first. And you know, like that you're that like success can be achieved, but nobody's got like all the pieces lined out and knows exactly how to like how it's going to go down. But if you just continue using all the best, uh, your best judgment that you can, every day and trying to make the right decisions to progress you that's like the, that's the best you can do and it's really like uh instilled more and more faith in me like all the time the, just seeing that like you know the more i just put my trust in like the things that i know are right the more that it pans out for me like i moved to fayetteville and i did not have much of a plan and then now i'm like all set up. Everything's all good. And I knew that if I just went Follow for it, it was going to work out. And the synchronicity will line up for you in ways you couldn't have planned for anyway if you were trying to plan it and worried about all those little details. It's just going to just roll with it. That's perfect. Exactly. I think exactly. we're about to get a puppet show, yeah. which is also a first for my show, my podcast. I never had a puppet show. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yes. Can I pick up here? Who's that puppet? <laughs> Who's that puppet? <laughs> We, yeah, we're real. <laughs> we're real. You're the puppet. You're the puppet, chair. We know about you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we heard about you in this podcast. All of y'all, we just hear y'all snap it up. Snap it up in <laughs> my swamp. Yeah, my swamp. Yeah, yeah, but y'all talking about some real shit, though. Not gonna lie. I respect, man, I respect. Yeah, y'all ain't talking about enough shit, though. Chris, you ain't gotta be all you know pleasure with this stuff. You trying to you trying to act like act like the cops of the border. Yeah, that's a, you're a pretty aggressive gator or, or well, a crocodile. I, I can't ever tell the difference. I'm a yeah, we gonna learn today. <laughs> Crocs names is Craig's. <laughs> yeah, um, Craig the Croc. I'm a pig. We're just trying to put this in this world together. How do you feel about all the stuff Jamie said about pigs today? You know, I can relate. You know, people always being mad at me, want to eat me and mommy and stuff. <laughs> but, you know, I also know that 
we can defeat them and we got something that they ain't got. Yeah, tell them, Piggy, tell them, up, tell them how we gonna beat them. Tell them, tell them how we gonna beat them with what they ain't got. Yeah, well, we got music and love and art. And they ain't got that. They, they don't have none of that. Yeah, they got shit. They got a paintbrush, not one drop of paint, not nothing. They don't even know what an e is like. <laughs> All right, well, what can we do to have a good 2020? You know, I think we all need to put on our love goggles and see with love, pure love only. Yeah, put on love goggles and get crunk. Have a party the whole year. Okay. That's pretty exhausting, okay? But anyway. <laughs> Year-long party, get crunk, love goggles. Yeah. Sounds like we're going to need some ecstasy. All right. <laughs> That's right. We, we just need to jam the funk out. Every All right, call out did. Brandon for not jumping on the call yet also. Yeah, Brandon Arnold. Brandon, yeah. where he at? Mm. He got mm -hmm. the goggles. He has all the love goggles. We're just in here kicking it, dude. I Come here. Goggles, they're dope. Yeah, that shit. I put that shit on the festival one time, and I fell asleep. I fell asleep. It was on me out. Anyways, we love so something. Something you guys brought up earlier that I kind of wanted to touch on is uh, <laughs> is, uh, um, this some of these like negative like false spiritual guidance sort of situations where like people uh, seem to think that they need to like shut down their whole lives to like go back and like heal from things. And I don't really agree with that. I think you can, you do like most of that. But of course there's times when you need to like step back and just like, uh, and assess your situation. But for the most part, I think like you, you should really be like healing while on your path, you know, active, active healing active yeah. active outward expression and healing through activation yeah i, I agree that dude. is the healing you're not gonna get you know it's like the inward introspection never ends you know what i mean like it's, no it doesn't that forever and that's that's exciting you know it's cool like you get to always be exploring yourself and that's pretty dope but it's kind of intellectual masturbation at a certain point too you know what I mean? yeah absolutely yeah yeah it's uh he says as it, he appears to pull his pants back up. <laughs> <laughs> Puppet show is for a reason. I'm just saying. <laughs> Misdirection's not just for the oppressor, guys. Ah, beautiful, beautiful. Switch it around on them. <laughs> we got to use their tools, man. Mm -hmm. uh, it works for them. It works for us. But uh, Boom. yeah. I still didn't get to take a piss because I had to do lighting for the puppet show. So I'm going to go do that real quick. But I'm listening okay. to you again. Okay, cool. Yeah, good luck in there. And then my oh, we video got Bradley is back. back. Hey. Yeah, sorry, I don't know where I went. <laughs> cool, cool. That, did you see the puppet show though? Because I feel like we all learned a valuable lesson from yes, that. Yes, I did. I could see everything that was happening. I and I didn't even know I was off. <laughs> what? We did. We I'm sorry. It was a sad day. It's all good. So, and I, I appreciate what you were saying because it's part of healing and especially on the shamanic path is you don't need to take time out to heal. You should own your healing. It's, it's going through it versus sweeping it under the rug because when you sweep it under the rug or you integrate, you know, pain, that's whenever you need to go see a shaman because they got to take it out of you, you know, it's, and you can't avoid it. It's, it's yeah, and that irritation is actually part of what will drive you forward on your path. It's uh, my favorite metaphor. I use it mm -hmm. constantly is that the grain of sand in the oyster is an irritant, but it turns into a pearl, a pearl of spiritual wisdom Correct. or enlightenment or truth or whatever. It's the, the shit that you're having a hard yes. time with that might yes. make it seem difficult to follow your dream is the shit that you most need to go through so that you can help other people go through the same shit more easily. Oh, yeah, dude. God, that's so true. Well, yeah, because every wise man starts out as a fool. And returns to the, the fool. <laughs> and Enter to the wise man. Knows to, to, yeah, because the, the, the wiser you get, the more foolish you become. <laughs> the faster we go, the rounder we get. That's yeah. super true. A fool that persists in his folly that's will a, soon become wise. 
best way to learn yeah, is by man, doing yeah, the thing, totally. even if you do it wrong. Yeah. It, it, that's what like jo Jonathan was just referring to is like, you know, making mistakes, you're going to grow a lot more through making mistakes. I feel like, you know, like what Bradley was talking about earlier, our su super thin skin of our generation, we're afraid to fail and to make mistakes. And you right. don't fucking learn. Like Jonathan, I bet you fucked up jams a lot of times before you got awesome at them. Dude, yeah. I still fuck up jams. <laughs> yeah, right. but that's probably some of the best ones too. I'll honestly, right you know, it's some of the most beautiful things. Bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And well, it's, if you uh, don't try, uh, you don't fail. You know, and that's no, a safe place to be for people, and it's a place of stagnation. If you don't try, then you don't have to get blamed for failing. Exactly. And, but you also don't grow. And it's so easy to criticize. And we have such a, a oh, society yeah. right now that are of spectators. Armchair that, quarterbacks. People they call who it. are out there doing it. But, you know, I think it was Brene Brown that said, unless you're in the arena with dirt on your face with me, your opinion does not matter to me. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, right, mm -hmm. right. The, uh, the, the, the wolf does not concern himself with the opinion of, of sheep kind of thing, which is Correct. pretty, uh, yeah. put it. You know, it's a, because it's, it's a, funny. So many people have critiques on how I should do my job and probably on Jamie, how you should do your job and of Jonathan, how you should play your music. And you're like, unless you're actually doing it with me and you're in down in the yeah. trenches, you have no you're on the field of battle talking about yeah. Yeah. it. Would be the, nice the warriors aren't know. listening to the, uh, to the nurses about the war. you know? Right. And the nurses aren't listening to the warriors on how to treat the people coming exactly, in. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> diametrically opposed. No, yeah, saying, no, you need to go sit down. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, right, right. For sure, for sure. Yeah. yeah, I love that though. It's like if you're not active in the in the battle or the struggle, as the as the you know the you know, Mississippi friends of you know you're not you're not in the game and it's like i've been doing a lot of football photography this year which has been really different and unique for me i've never had any connection with football ever and it's Ooh. been really cool because i actually had to shed a couple of tears about some emotional moments of football games watching some growth happen with kids and stuff and you know anything like that you can grow from and learn from and have this this team structure and stuff but uh it what was really get it resonate with me was a mississippi state egg bowl game i went and shot uh, while i was in mississippi listening to the players talk about these fucking fans don't have no idea. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're up there armchair quarterback and they have no idea what it's like to be on that field and to get in, get, you know, get mauled by these cats, you know, and to be, you have 300 pound linebackers head hunting you, you know, it's like, it, it, it's easy to watch from a, from a TV screen or from a Facebook feed. And, you know, it's uh, well, active activism, you know? Well, I used to like, I, I'd go, I'd go see a, see a set and like say, you know, you know, some band like Humphreys, you know, or some, some, somebody who's super sick and you've seen them like, like bring it wicked hard, you know? And, yeah. and so, and, and as a, as a spectator, you, you, you expect, okay, I want to get this every time because they can bring yeah. it that hard. And then you go and you see yeah. a show and it's like, you're kind of, you know, they bring it, but it's just not, it's just not. That. It's not that Halloween the, show so in Tulsa, dude. The lesson that we learned time, from all dude. of our, our yeah, deadhead dude. friends and fish-loving friends there. is don't spend all your money to see the same band 150 times. <laughs> There's other good things out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't well, okay, in go that 150 far, times my, in like a three-year <laughs> span. Team sequence is excluded from that uh, axiom. Yeah. You know, you guys see us every single time. It's always different, man. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> don't my get point, healthy, my point here is that like, like once, once I got into once I got into to being on the other side of it, um, I realized, wow, you know, these guys are doing this every day, and some days, oh, we got our boy. Um, yeah. uh, these guys are doing this every day, oh, and yeah. like some days. I don't like the fires I do on other days. Oh, you know, the internet, man. This guy in here. Excuse me, sir. All right, we got five people in here. That means we're gonna have to be a little careful about uh, all talking over each other. Maybe even mute ourselves and we're not talking. But I, I got a, we got another yeah. Wolf Patrol uh, member in here. Also, got to say shout out to the Wolf Patrol because we were talking about getting tickets and cops and all that and every ticket i've ever got from the wolf patrol had a zero dollar fine attached to it all i had to do was somehow rectify my mistake and uh <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't rate me for my cash so thanks wolf patrol for keeping us all safe out there real official 
<laughs> well, that, that has changed. We have a Ven Venmo account now, so there are fines now. <laughs> so, but it's only if you believe that it's real, you know, which that's kind of part of the lesson to be learned, too, is if you believe it enough to pay for it. That's just part of your learning. Uh, I mean, that, you know? I heard <laughs> that, that works, works with, with the real cops, too. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly, dude. It only works if you believe in it, guys. It's like Tinkerbell. And that's Pink how the whole band. government works. It runs on fairy dust. But, uh, yeah, Arnold. Yeah, right, right. As in they so, ground yeah. up the uh, fairy people and, and turn them into dust <laughs> and stole their power. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, no, some of those fat lines of fairy dust is pretty, uh, pretty heady stuff. Man. I don't know if you've ever ground up fairies, dude. That's nothing to be fucked with, right? Take it easy. A little All bit right, goes so a long way. Crazy, but let's uh, let Brandon <laughs> say something. Hey, what's who up? Who are you? Dust Tell everyone who you are. Hey, I, don't even know. <clears throat> I don't even know what to say right now. Uh, you guys are really killing it on the uh, on the chat. We're good at talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Them boys, them boys got pretty mouthed, you know what I'm saying? We're like the old coffee brigade down at McDonald's at 5 a.m. Like Jamie was saying, this is like uh, <laughs> Woodrow Wilson fireside chat. <laughs> I feel like I'm on a Wook Patrol uh, meeting call right now. Yeah, we have, yeah, right? It's very similar. A lot <laughs> less of those face filters, but pretty much otherwise close. Yeah. <laughs> I got a shout out to the, <laughs> you know, if you get a call from Angie Burton at 3 a.m. on a messenger video, you <laughs> her clip. I want to say thanks to thanks to everyone in the audience Cliff. that's made some cool comments like, like Aspen Finch and Taylor Townsend, Chris Myers, Johan Collins. We've had a lot of fun commentary throughout this uh, video stream, and it's just really cool that we actually can do this and join the rest of the community that's not on the call at the same time because it would be cool enough if all five of us were just in a room together but it's bigger than that we're in other people's rooms whoa <laughs> <laughs> well, you're crazy we're in you the future, oh, that, went, that went sideways we are <laughs> we're the cyborgs of the future we're live. getting close to three hours, though, and I think we might turn into a pumpkin podcast. if we go that long. <laughs> yeah. We better let we better let Brandon uh, say his piece. What's your uh, What's your assessment of 2019 and moving into 2020? If you had to sum it up in a, you know, 500 words or less. Uh, as my senior analysis for my final paper. Uh, yeah, we need 2019. Uh, I I feel like I was doing a lot of the same things I was doing in 2018 as far as continuing to grow in the same same path and then uh, but I feel like towards the end of the year things have kind of changed and opened up to where I think 2020 is going to be learning uh, a lot of new things and there's going to be a lot of uh, new perspectives and uh, different perspective from me. And a more open-minded kind of experience, I think, next year. Um, yeah, I'm really excited for 2020. I think me, too. me, along with, I mean, all my friends, have really been growing our powers and superpowers and ultra superpowers and skills. And uh, I'm really excited to see those keep growing and um i man i just every year i say it you know this is the year that it's just gonna spill over and i i'm really hoping that uh 2020 really really explodes with with all my friends and uh everyone just with wealth and and um and knowledge i hope it just keeps growing and amen bro and spill over and then we can help thank even you more for people. blessing us with some prosperity I'll magic. Say, man, Yes, prosperity magic. Well, one of the best, one of my favorite, I mean, Bernard, you're one of my favorite humans and I tell you that all the time, but one of, <laughs> one of the things I love about you the most is your refusal to stop learning new crafts and, 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 yeah. and this, uh, this, in, this engraving path all of a sudden is super inspiring, dude, because it's like, just like, oh, like I was picking on you at that Friendsgiving, like all of a sudden you're the master engraver now, you're just going to fuck around and just like, <laughs> Just like just casually delve into master level engraving. Just out of the fucking blue, you think you can just go and just, just do that? You can. You know? Well, once you get to a that, certain... is what humans are capable of. 
That's exactly. Right. No, it's so we're talking exactly. about the ancestors, but when you get into crafts like that, dude, there's a lot of ancestors that are ready to come in and be like, okay, here's what I know. Let me just yeah. put that in your brain. Yeah, dude. They just need yeah, a hand. I got some they ideas. Yeah. Yeah. You got a ghost guiding your hands. Dude. Ghost hands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's mm -hmm. creepy, bro. You know what the grateful, you ever heard the original of the grateful dead folklore? Like what the, you know, there's like the myth of what the grateful dead named their band after the, uh, the, the, in the, the ship, the land of the dark, the ship of the sun is pulled by the grateful dead. That's like an apocryphal story of where their name came from, oh, wow. but, it, but that's not true. The re, the real name is it's a type of folk, folklore i was meaning to bring this up earlier when bradley talked about the ancestors because a grateful dead folk story is a folk tale present in many cultures around the world it involves a traveler who encounters a corpse of someone who never received a proper burial typically stemming from an unpaid debt the grateful dead spirit may take many different physical forms including that of a guardian angel animal or fellow traveler the traveler's encounter with the deceased comes near the end of the traveler's journey and then the traveler is later rewarded or has their life saved by a person or animal who is actually the soul of the dead person. And that is the, that is a, the Grateful Dead folk tale. The Grateful Dead is a form of the donor. There's a belief when the person dies, their soul is separated from the body. Giving someone a proper burial allows their spirit to carry on to the next life. But it's like the principle of reciprocity and like the, 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 the dead can come still help you from the other side. So that's like I've lost a lot of people in my life and I've always like tried to manifest that of like, bringing my friends into the moments and my family members that have died of like pulling them down in with me of like, come help me. With or just this, check this know? out. I know like, you'd uh, love this, just you it. know? Yeah. Yeah. Dude. No, my cousin Mikey did it the first yeah. time it was electric forest. Right. We were all rolling balls at cheese. And he was like, he, he came up to me and like hugged me real hard. He was like, he just named our grandparents who were both dead just out of the blue. We we're like, just balls tripping, you know, it's like fucking crazy party. <laughs> Saturday night at the festival. Like, Don Taylor, Lucille Taylor, and just like, ah, oh, I mean, we both just started crying. It was just like, ah, oh. we just like manifested just them in just now. memory. It's like, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it gave me chills to say their name, you know, uh -huh. but that's that spell, you know, you're casting spells with those words, you know, it's, we got the white magic, you know? Yeah, baby. Wow. Where do we even go from here? Yeah, I had a, I had a cool experience with, uh, with a guardian angel one time when I was tripping with a bunch of friends and uh, some of them had never tripped before and they were really scared to go into these woods. And um, so we took them <laughs> into these woods and um, because they were scared of it or despite. Well, them <laughs> yeah. But well, we, we, yeah, yeah. We, we helped them. They were scared. But those them. woods, that's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we were basically showing it, like showing them that, you know, it was okay. Like we were all together as a group and we all had, had power and we were, we were strong, powerful beings. And um, basically we get into these woods and me and my other buddy were, we were listening and catching on to something following us and like surrounding us, <laughs> circling us. And, uh, but we weren't like telling ever, anybody else we were seeing that cause they were already kind of nervous. And so, but anyway, long story short, we, I, I thought what I pulled from that, it was like a higher energy being or like aliens or something that was picking up our energy and they were, they wanted to show themselves, but they were weighing the energy of the group and the group as a whole wouldn't have been able to handle that kind of encounter. So they were just speaking to oh, me and, wow. my friend. and then, so we get to the, to the, out of the woods and uh, all of a sudden this path appears out of nowhere that we didn't know about like a, a nice path. And, um, so we go walking, we run into a river and everyone starts playing in the river and I like turn around and I'm, I like want to get more weird. So I start going into the dark again. And then all of a sudden I see this really bright light and it's uh it's an angel and it's, you know, what I got from it was my guardian angel. And it was just like telling me that, that like we, we were doing good and it was like backing up the idea that we were, what we were telling everybody else before we went into the woods, like we are powerful, like we are safe because we believe in it and um and yeah that was my guardian angel story and so i guess we were kind of like the animals that saved our friends and like got them over their initial fear to go into the woods and uh -oh. ended up an awesome time you know like very cleansing river and they got over the fear and like yeah i saw that guardian angel and it was just so beautiful that's wild, man <laughs> That's beautiful. Dude. Only if, that. very rarely have I, I ever like stuff. run into beings while in that type of psychedelic expanded consciousness state. And yeah, usually other people aren't even like cognizant of the beings, even if you're in a group. And it's kind of cool to hear you tell that story because it makes me feel more 
comfortable <laughs> with the fact that I've had similar experiences and that I'm not the only one. <laughs> yeah, no, no way. Yeah, you're definitely not the only one. <laughs> I experience that any time I do anything like that. So it's like, I, I, I have to sit back like two hours to sit down. Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know somebody Not in this world. Somebody <laughs> I know rolled seven Yahtzees of all sixes. Ooh. Yeah. That's wow. highly improbable. That, that highly improbable. Kind of twists my head all up. What isn't six about humanity and family? So, uh, what spirits were around you when that happened? I wasn't there. <laughs> oh, you weren't there? Yeah, it was, my, it was an ex girlfriend's mom. I know she oh, was wow. telling me the truth, though. Wow. Right. That's wild. Dude, if, is anybody else seeing these numbers? I mean, I, I get made fun of occasionally for talking about this, but the number number duplication thing with that 12 12 uh, moon synchronicity. I've been seeing these numbers like crazy lately, these duplicate numbers for a, a good couple of months, like constantly. It seems like every time I pump gas, every time I look at a clock or anything that oh, just yeah. like, repeating it's just, every, every It's a tough thing to tell whether it's like psychosomatic or not, because uh, you're going to end up like once you see a pattern, you're going to see patterns more often. And once you like are looking out for numbers, you're going to see them. And also like there's the fact that we're like, habitual creatures so like it's likely yeah. and we're you know, looking at devices with numbers on them all yeah, the time and you ignore it when you don't recognize yeah, the yeah. pattern but if you just take the symbolism of what those numbers sh could represent or do represent to you and go okay i see that it's a reminder that i'm connected to something uh deep that's that's what i take it as i don't read too deep into yeah. it it's like this is this is like a sign that i'm in my synchronous zone and i'm in the i'm on the path that i'm supposed to be on i'm walking like the other day on the way over to Fayetteville, it's like this this eye-opening experience I just had. And it's like basically just like deciding to move to Fayetteville. It's like I like I just did it yesterday, basically. And like uh, I pumped gas at the at the store halfway between here and Harrison. I was on the phone, not paying any attention to the gas, and it just naturally landed on thirty three, thirty three. It's just like wow, you know. And I and it, what's weird about that is that I do that on purpose. Like I try to make it a, a sequential number for my. For my records for taxes so i know that i pumped that you know what i mean like i try to land my gas <laughs> on like a number that i can see on, yeah. <laughs> on my uh, on my statement and be like okay that's not a fraudulent charge or whatever you know it's just like bing it just hit 33 degrees like you can admit fuck? that you're obsessive compulsive there's no judgment here <laughs> <laughs> no look i, I, just, have, I, just, have to, I just have to clean my doorknob three times before i leave the house we <laughs> all do that <laughs> <laughs> Who's touching the I laid out my dog does it. It's fine. You know? <laughs> All right, guys, we got to wrap this thing up in a second. You know, so I'm going to give everybody a chance to take the floor oh, one, yeah, yeah. one last good chunk of time. And then uh, we'll start. We'll just start with uh, Bradley because he had something to say. Okay. Oh, well, I was just saying, I think that it's about the stories we tell ourselves, you know, with these numbers and, and, and seeing uh, repeated phrases in media and books and movies and you know that was a powerful thing that our ancestors used to do they would put messages and you know how to live your life in stories and a lot of our movies and television shows still follow that formula of the hero's journey you know oh, so yeah. even though Archetype. you know it might be mass marketed or whatever i think spirit still has the power to dive into whatever electronic or whatever book you're reading or whatever movie you're watching to reiterate your path or help guide you along. And also one last thing for Jamie, when you're going, wear that flannel shirt. Red flannel is one of the most powerful protections around. Interesting. Yeah, that's actually connected Sorry. to ancestry too because that type of patterning and weaving yes. was uh, popular in like uh, – <laughs> it's Mojo pop bags. popular in like Scotland, Wales too, oh, uh, Britain, really? where a lot of us have some ancestors the for Martins. sure. And today is Tuesday, so red oh, is a, a power color for the day. Tuesday. Yes. It's also your best redneck camouflage as a book. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of yeah. levels and layers to it. You're damn right. Take one thing away. <laughs> We're more red flannel in 2020, everybody. <laughs> Waving that rebel flag, baby. 
<laughs> awesome. Thanks, Bradley. Thank you for that, Bradley. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, Brandon, what do you got for us? Oh, I got uh, – I already told you my story. Um, yep. Just uh, keep going on the path you're doing. Uh, hmm, learn. Take notes. Notes are good. Yeah, there Smile. you go. Smile. Uh, more smiling. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, dude, sometimes shit gets tough, but uh, you just got to keep grinding out. And, um, you know, we go through cycles and, uh, you know, yeah, just keep going, man. Keep going. Life can be rough, but love yourself. Don't get caught up in your head too much on ideas that you don't even know anything about and uh <laughs> follow yeah, what's exciting smile be nice be nice to people yeah be excited do you think yeah, the more stoked you. you are the more energy love that, the more lit up you are on an energetic level the more that things are gonna magnetically align and snap in place for sure being stoked is important exactly and someone asked in the chat sarah did that uh she'd heard that 11 11 or the 11s were potentially a negative thing and that's definitely a hex type of concept that can get thrown out there if you have if you believe that something is oh. harmful to you you've immediately created that reality so or that something's a bad that's sign it. so uh it's possible to just create your own association with that like if you see the numbers just go okay when I see these numbers, I'm going to remind myself that I have all the power in my reality to change and create and manifest and be, be okay, be more than okay, be grateful, be love. You know, that's your that's your superpower built in as a human. Yeah. Well, that's the thing about symbolism. You know, like I have clients come in saying, you know, what does my dream mean? What does this vision mean? What do these numbers mean? I'm like, well, what does it mean to you? Yep. You. Because exactly. that's how you symbols really... work. It, they're speaking. Yeah, everyone's to you, got a different to definition of every word, <laughs> <Yeah>. even. <laughs> yeah. If you tried to like ask even simple words, yeah. if yeah. we all wrote down the definition for the same word right now, we get five different answers for sure. Right. Jonathan, what about you? Yep. Oh um first oh I want to point out the <laughs> I got you, bad boy, on my hat right there. Oh, yeah, there, that's a tiger chance. pin I made back in the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right on yeah, that dope-ass Illuminati hat you've got there. <laughs> yeah, dude. So, so I got this, uh, I've got this, this hat, you know, this Illuminati hat. And then I've got, the, uh, I've got these rope sandals. Or they broke, but I used to have them. And I walked into uh, to a place I used to work one day. My family was like, Oh, you got the rope sandals and the Illuminati hat on. And I just said, yeah, I call this outfit the Da Vinci Code. It <laughs> 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 just felt like the dopest joke ever. But, uh, and you got flannel on, too. So, uh, just not red. Yeah, and I got, well, it's not really flannel, it's like, but it is All pearl right. snaps. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah it's pearl snaps. I'm also wearing chaps. You can't see them, but chaps and spurs. And Are they assless hat. chaps? Well, you'll just have to come over and find out, won't you? <laughs> All right, Jack. But man, uh, just just stay, keep keep positive, and uh, but but at the same time, don't like ign ignore real issues, and then balance, uh, baby. And, and, uh, just keep like getting like yeah, get excited about things, and then and make connections, and like I feel like people something I've noticed is that people get nervous about themselves and who they are and then they don't connect with other people as much because they i feel like they're sort of afraid to express themselves because they're not 100 percent comfortable with who they are and then when you do that you're just you're limiting your connections yourself. and yeah we brought that up are, earlier with the story that and, i had uh, with um, marcus phillips uh, at the beginning of the show that's a real it's yeah. a real lesson man yeah exactly i remember that yeah. it is it is so just, just trust yourself. I'll speak on behalf of Michael who had to leave earlier, but I bet that if he was here, he'd say laugh more often on purpose, even if nothing is quote unquote funny <laughs> and just, just laugh, man. Because that activates your solar plexus and 
manifestation engine yeah, laugh in your with body. every vowel sound after the h yeah. just do them all and you'd probably be like activating all your chakras aligning your shit and it's gonna be awesome <laughs> align your shit Jamie, what you got for us to close out here oh man uh i don't know if i can add too much to what all these summations have been but for me personally it's just like if anybody's out there struggling with depression or anxiety or self doubt or whatever it is, just know that everybody, like so many of us go through that too. And that just don't give up. And that usually the, like somebody taught me in rehab one time, the blessing is on the other side of through, which is like, if you can just suffer through it, you will learn a lesson that will help you make you stronger and you'll never have to go there again. But if you give up, you get stuck and you can stay stuck until you learn that lesson. And as soon as you get through it, the doors will open and things can be better than you possibly could possibly ever imagine. Don't give up. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah but, uh, you know, love yourself, love your neighbor, forgive people and, you know, be great. Amazing. I'll, I guess to finish off by reminding everyone, you can subscribe to Interverse on like every platform imaginable. And it's getting dark outside. I can see Do the it. full moon rising. I mean, it's 95% full. Ooh. It's definitely been a like a wild ass full moon conversation. I think this might even be the longest episode of Interverse ever and definitely the most people on the most no, people in one show ever as well. So this is like we we did Collins, but what's cool about the Collins and nobody is talked all about that Elk have Meter had episodes in the past. So all these guys have been on the show, look up their past episodes while you're subscribing. Each one of them was amazing. I mean, for different reasons. I mean, Jamie's been on more than one time. We're definitely going to talk to all of you guys again in the future. I'm so grateful that I've forged cool friendships through following my path because I probably would not be tight with all you guys if I hadn't been doing this. I mean, maybe in some way it would have been faded, right. but uh, that's a big, uh, a really special thing for me that we're finishing off 2019 with this big, massive super show that started off with just me and Jamie wanted to do one. And I'm glad we opened it up because this has been so much fun. I'm overflowing with joy and gratitude right now. This is fucking awesome. Well, thank you for having us. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Chance. Thanks yeah. for creating yeah. this container and, and shining so bright and, and inviting us to be a part of this and share it with the community, man, for real. It's a huge service you're doing and keep doing it. All right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What he said. All Love right. you guys. Thanks everybody for joining us in this <laughs> yeah. stream too. And you know, if you're listening, share the share the stream with people. Uh, you know, share the cool stuff you learn in this conversation with people. And most of all, just share the love with yourself. That's the, the most important thing to take away. Always. All right. Hasta luego. All right. I guess that's right. it. Be well. Love you guys. <laughs> all right. <laughs> See y'all deep sequence. Yeah, I'll see deep sequence on Thursday oh, at Springfield. Yeah. So, all right. Outland. Yeah, yeah, and I think Chance, you pointed oh, one yeah. thing out that as and you we... raise your vibe, you find yeah, your thank tribe. Thank you, Bradley. Ooh. Yeah. Hey, hey Barnold, are you uh, are you going to be at that Springfield show? You want to paint? What Springfield <laughs> show? <laughs> oh. Thursday. Yeah, I just deep gotta say, Brandon through. was at the Lucid it's show in Springfield the, the other day, and he did not say hi. Maybe. To me. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, because I had my hair cut. He had no idea who I was. <laughs> Real cool. Well, I, uh, I didn't realize you. Were, I actually didn't did realize you, the you were there until I saw pictures of you later. And I was like, how did I? It's because I was so absorbed in the music. I never exactly. even left my zone. I was just dancing and ecstatic with the uh, crazy lucid music. <laughs> I was painting. You were you were lurking over there when I call the awkward high five territory over there. Me yes. and Johan and like three other people share the most awkward high fives I've ever had in my life over there by uh, where I saw you at this show. It has bad high five energy over there. I don't know what it is. <laughs> All right, good, good game, game, everybody. Good game. Yeah. High five. Good game, Boom. Yes, good game everybody. Yeah. Right. Good game, everybody. Right. Love you guys. Awesome. Love you all too. Good to meet you, baby. <laughs>